Welcome back to my channel for the Bravo Breakdown with Jolene. That's me, stand-up comedian and Bravo super fan. Jolene Lunzer here to break it all down for you. Today, we are going to get caught up on our series where we roast and recap Tom Sandoval, a.k.a. Tom Sandy Butts um, podcast. Everybody loves Tom. Today, we're going to try to get through the Dr. Drew episode, and hopefully it doesn't take too long, and then we can dive into this Tom and Tom question episode. I have not seen uh, or watched any of these podcasts yet, um, so I'll be reacting and roasting them live here with you. So uh, before we get started, make sure you smash that like. It helps me so much in the algorithm. I appreciate you guys, and please make sure you're subscribed and you smash the notification so you get notified every time I go live, post new content about Bravo or any of the other things I cover that you guys enjoy. You guys have been liking these um, roasts and recaps of Tom Sandoval and his interesting podcast. So I'm going to keep doing them because I love you guys. Okay. And we get through this together together, together. So smash the like, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and then if you want to support the channel further, you can always send a super chat while we're live, a super thanks after the video post. Thank you to those of you who have been um, doing that just uh, today. And last night I got um, some super thanks. I want to shout out because I appreciate you guys. Tiffany and Dewan, uh, Blind Adventures, Frederica, thank you so much. And thank you to those of you who hit me up on the Venmo Cash App PayPal. And you can always check out my um, Patreon and also uh, my YouTube membership if you're not already a member. Okay. I see you guys. I see you guys. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining us live. Everyone is here. We're here. We're here. Robert's here. Robert says, Dr. Drew is a practicing physician who is a board certified, who is board certified in internal and addiction medicine, still runs a private practice, is on staff at Huntington Memorial Hospital. Really? I thought he was just a TV doctor from now on. Dr. Drew was my doctor in LA. No way, Vida. How was that experience? Um, if you care to share, you don't have to share. I just remember Dr. Drew from Loveline. And when I was a teenager, Loveline was everything. And it was just this show where him and Adam Carolla talked about sex and they had a uh, call in. And it was very entertaining at a time before we had, you know, social media and um, streaming and YouTube. We didn't have those options. So Loveline was something you looked forward to listening to in your car. And then I think they put it on MTV as well as like a show. So that's how I remember it. But I have been side eye and Dr. Drew for a couple of years. I used to love him. And now I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know. He's given me some Dr. Phil vibes, but we'll see how uh, it goes today because he is Tom Sandy Butt's guest. And this is everybody loves Tom. And this is uh, episode five. Tom took Dr. Drew's narcissism test. So we will roast it, recap it again. We take a comedic look. We have some fun. And then occasionally we make you know, some, um, good points sometimes, uh, we'll see, but sound off in the chat. I love to hear from you guys as well. Joanne, thank you so much for becoming a member. Appreciate you, Joanne Hendricks. Thank you so much. All right, let's get started without further ado. Let's have some fun guys. Let's, so the only thing we can do is laugh. The only thing we can do is laugh at this podcast because I don't think Tom intended for it to be such a comedic show, but uh, it really is unintentionally funny where you end up laughing, unfortunately for Tom, at Tom rather than with Tom. Let's get our background music set, do a little lo-fi. Let me know if that becomes too loud for anybody or too distracting, but we definitely want to get the mood set because we got to listen to Tom. I am going to speed it up as well because who can listen to him in his natural state? I know I can't. All right. We're going to be snarky and fun, sarcastic and satirical. Let's get started. Back to another episode of Everybody Loves Tom. Oh, I'm yay. Very excited today because I have one of the most 
famous doctors on the planet. In fact, the most famous doctor on the planet, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Drew. And I love Tom. Yes. So Dr. Drew here, has Dr. combat Dr. boots. <laughs> oh, yeah. dare you. Oh, my God, you guys. You Wait a minute. Uh, right Jason's gone. Jason's gone. I feel like Tom Sandy Butt is taking notes from my show. He removed Jason. I mean, pretty big deal. And he brought Nikki Glazer on to roast him. Tom, I'm giving you this free advice. You really should be paying me a consultation fee. Dr. Or <laughs> Jason's gone, not Dr. Drew. Jason's gone. All laptop lap is gone. Right off the bat. All right. Um, how do I look? You look good. I mean, I, I you know, like I again? No, but listen, it. but it's, it's, I don't, I, I noticed you had a, before the mics heated up, there was a little conversation about style. And I, Oops. Yeah. I, I got grew up in a little ahead of myself. Up. I got a little exactly. ahead of myself. It, yeah, it, you, were, you were in the sand. I was in the desert. It was so fucked up. It was such a mess. Dude, I, I was, you know, pathetic. Yeah. So, but but listen, you know, like I let, again? No, I but listen. But it's, it's, I don't. I, I noticed you had a before the mics heated up. There was a little conversation about style, and I thought, not my thing. Not, I, 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 not I, my I, thing. I, I, my wife does everything. She really? Just, I, yeah. I think you look she, great. She takes. I were not for her. It would be pathetic. Yeah. So, but but listen. Uh, last time I saw you was at the reunion for Special Forces, right? And that's where we met. We never oh. met before that. Yeah, it was. Totally and we share that heritage of having done Special Forces, which is weirdly bonding. Yes. Right. Even though I wasn't in the snow with you guys, it, it's just this incredible experience. Yeah. Yeah. It's like nothing else. He talked to you about it. Yeah. He told me all about it. So it's kind of a, a trauma bond. Yes. It's a trauma. It's yeah. trauma bonding, but it's almost like you know, hoorah, right? I you, you yeah. know, I see you've been there. All right, yeah. we got something in common. Exactly. It, yeah, it, you, were, it, you were in the sand. You were in I the sand. I was in the desert. It was so fucked up. It was such a mess. Dude, I, I was out quick with a heat stroke, brain swelling, all kinds of stuff. Wow. Whoa. I was in the, I was in the ICU. In the Jordanian hospital, the bed next to me that. with Kate, Kate Gosling. She, she was the same you. Kate Gosling. He got, got taken out fast. Man. There were there was like six of us in the hospital within the first couple of days. That heat, I, I'm sure. The heat. Well, I was so I was noticing that when you guys get back, you get you get warm up tents. You have a tent you have, in your yeah. cabins. You had fire. I'm like, God, if we can go somewhere and cool off, it would have been like. I'm bored. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Yeah, you guys were just out in yeah, the tent was hotter tent. than the tent was hotter than the yeah. out in the sun. I've had a tent in my backyard, so I I know that. Did you just say I have a tent? In my backyard, so I know. I think it's a little different than a tent in LA. <laughs> this guy is, oh my God. Just having a tent in my it's backyard. Not, it's, not, it's not good. It's miserable. 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 Where, where'd you grow up? Um, I grew up in uh, St. Louis, outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Is that where the tent was or was it no, out no, here? No, here, like here. in LA. But did you come out here for television? Um, I did, yeah, TV and acting, which is which is crazy because, you know, I was looking at your, um, and obviously you specialize in addiction and you went to <sighs> oh, school. Um, and here we go, Donna. And I'm thinking, you know, as you're in med school, are you, are you sitting there thinking to yourself like, wow, I hope one day no, zero. this will uh, no. turn into a, yeah. a, a TV? <laughs> no, zero, zero thoughts. Wouldn't even know what you were talking about. So, so I started doing radio during my fourth year of medical school because- Dr. Drew is like, he started before probably there was any TV doctors. Tom, your questioning is again, oh, not even subpar. Anthony Fauci was yelling at us young guys to get out there and educate. Damn, Anthony Fauci is one of his peers, one of Dr. Drew's peers. That's taking it back to the old school. About this thing that we just started. Thank you, Robert. Wow. Thank you, Robert. And it was, and we were, I was. back then. Yeah, yeah. He was my hero for most of my career. And he. um. What do you mean Fauci back then? Tom, Dr. Fauci's been around for a long. Oh, Tom, Tom, Tom's got to read a book. We got to get Tom a book. And it can't be about fashion. And it can't be about Tom. It has to be a legit book. And we were, we were just like hand over fist with AIDS patients. And here I was a fourth year medical student telling young men every day that they had six months to live. You know, it was, it was brutal. And, and See, I, these are the parts where I, I really like Dr. Drew, and I remember what I liked about Dr. Drew. But then the more he got into TV, the more I was like, mm. and then the more he kind of shared his political affiliations. I couldn't help it. I know I'm supposed to separate it, and I want people to do that for me too, but it was just a lot. I had this opportunity to go on the radio, and I went on the radio, and I, I was bamboozled that young people had never heard of this thing. No one was talking about it. It was unbelievable. It was hush hush. So he's on Tom Sandy about talking about the AIDS crisis, which such an important, interesting topic, but not deserving of being on Tom Sandoval. Tom Sandoval's going to be like, what? AIDS is real? Like, you can just, um, I just can't even imagine what this follow up question is going to be. So it was only highly stigmatized, stigmatized, yeah, only gay men. Yeah. Gay yeah. Men. And so young people had never heard of this thing. No one was talking to them about it. It was unbelievable. It was hush hush. So it was only highly stigmatized, stigmatized, yeah. only gay only men. Gay yeah. Men. And so I thought, oh, it was hush hush. And I got to keep coming back, so I just just let Doctor Drew talk. I can come back. I just answer questions, and I just did it. Did it one night a week for ten years for free. I thought I was doing community service, and uh, and then all of a sudden I went to five nights a week, and all of a sudden it's a job, and then all of a sudden this TV guy showed up. It, it's really funny when in about nineteen, probably about ninety two or ninety three. When Tom turned 30, 1992. I remember I was talking to someone. He goes, "What do you want to be doing in ten years?" I remember so thinking, we got, "So we got like crisscross playing on the radio." Please stop. 
he's talking about something very important. And you're talking about the Mac dad will make you jump, jump. The daddy Mac will make you jump, jump. Crisscross will make you jump, jump. Come on, come on. Or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Not come on, come on, Julie. It's uh-huh. Uh-huh. Obviously, Crisscross was the shit, Tom, but you were 30 when Crisscross came out. I was like 10. So it was appropriate for me to like them. Not for you, old man. Oh. No, it's it's K Rock here because oh, okay, that became a big thing overnight here locally. Oh yeah, uh, and that was uh, Culture Club and Haircut One Hundred and okay. the Flock of Seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was on the radio when I got involved with radio. But radio was so powerful back then. You have no idea. It was this, oh yeah, I, I remember. You're early. barely. Oh, I know. I I know just as much as you, Doctor Drew. <sighs> Do you though? Old enough to really yeah, know. Yeah. It was cultural. I love how Doctor Drew's like, oh yeah, you are old enough to really know. They like how you defined yourself. You know, you had the people organize themselves around the radio events and blah, blah, blah. But in 93 or so, I remember somebody going, well, what do you want to be doing in 10 years? And I remember thinking, well, certainly not radio. And then Because I was doing medicine like 14 hours a day for decades. I mean, I was just full. How was, old is Dr. Drew 100? How was he doing it for decades? Was he Doogie Howser? Doing inpatient medicine, ICU medicine, Damn. outpatient medicine. Then I ran departments in a psychiatric hospital Damn. for many years. So, you, so, so it was crazy stuff. I was curious too when you said about um, Thank AIDS, you, Donna. Uh, you know, there are, there have been, you know, conspiracies thank you amy yeah yeah no, i always sorry. found it i know i i, I agree I, I, I live okay so tom's gonna start put his tinfoil hat on the tom tinfoil hat he's like okay so what do you think about the flat earth theory okay yeah what do you think about uh january 6th you think that trump really won? okay what do you think about you know aids was created um and right away dr drew's like okay we're not starting that not true mm, let's move on um but of course tom's gonna be like so what do you think about the sci-fi version of these important things you're talking about, the conspiracy tinfoil hat version, huh? I lived through a lot of that bullshit too. Am I out of count, yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, of course. And, and, and oh you know, like for instance, the Dallas Fires Club, right? Everyone knows the Dallas Fires Club, right? They were great when we had nothing to offer. We had nothing to offer these poor men. It was yeah. so dark, you have no idea. And if they wanted to go down and, and you know get something that made them feel better, please by all means go do that. But I, I was there when we opened the first boxes of AZT. I was there, and we were like. Oh my God, we have something to offer wow. these guys, and we can make them last an extra three months. And maybe in that, well, maybe in those three months, the, uh, it was the first antiviral we used for AIDS. And 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 if we get three more months, maybe we'll come up with another one. You know, and so, and that's what happened eventually. We you know we did we extend their life six months, and then we came up with some other ideas. And uh, all this, I didn't know Dr. Drew was like at the forefront um, during the AIDS crisis. I didn't know any of this about him. So very interesting. Wish he was talking about this on any other show that would take it seriously and have some great uh, commentary and things like that. But obviously. Tom's just going to bring up crisscross. BS about it. And then the Dallas Fires Club, by the way, became a problem because then they started saying, oh, don't listen to anything those doctors are telling you. They're causing AIDS. They're uh, destroying you. They're killing you. It really was. Uh, Tom's like, so you're saying it's they didn't cause the AIDS? Okay. I remember so hearing like all these things, you know, as a kid about AIDS and because nobody knew anything about it and there was all this fear. Well, to be fair to probably your generation, we scared. Our generation was the Ryan White generation. If you guys are around my age or a uh, Gen Xer, Boomer, you remember, obviously, um, or a Zennial like I am, um, you remember Ryan White. Ryan White was the first really national case that you saw of a young boy um, who got AIDS through a blood transfusion. And that almost made it... Um, you know, it made like middle of America and people who didn't care because they were like, oh, it's a gay thing. And the homophobia was, you know, rampant uh, back then. And so some people, you know, a, a lot of people just didn't care because they were like, oh, it's just happening to gay men. I don't care. Um, but then when um, Ryan White's story came out, it was uh, I think there, it opened up uh, people's eyes to the fact that no, you know, these kind of things and any kind of sickness or disease um, is, is, is something that you need to, you need to fight and you need to put research and money and time into um, because eventually, you know, going back to like, a, the only thing I can think of is like an MLK quote is, you know, an injustice everywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So any kind of disease anywhere is going to be a threat to all people eventually. Um, that's when, I mean, cause I didn't really, I mean, I was very young during the AIDS uh, crisis and, um, I just remember the story of Ryan White. It was just so, that's what you were like, oh my God, a kid who's like a little older than me has, what is this AIDS? And then obviously growing up in music, to bring it back to music, um, the first like musical artist I ever knew of to have AIDS and die of AIDS was um, Easy e And that was, we were just like, you know, cause I was like, I think I was 13 at the time when he died. Um, and so, uh, interesting. This is such an interesting topic. I'm just so sad he has to tell it to Tom.
we scared the shit out of you guys. Mm. And we did it quite consciously. Uh, we were like, we expected it to break more into the heterosexual community, which it, it never did the way we thought it would. That we thought, well, we got to really emphasize that that anybody can get this because it's not just because you're gay, you're getting it. I mean, anybody can get it. So it's going to get there. Like with the time it was spreading through Africa, the heterosexual community. I'm sure you, you can imagine, you know, with all the misinformation that was out there back then. I mean, AIDS? imagine, yeah, with AIDS, oh, yeah, imagine well, what that would have been like with social media today. Oh, like, you're right. I mean, I mean think about that. Yeah. I mean, it could have been just. Wow. Brutal. I'm curious too. I mean, I felt, you know, it would be great to have you on because as. Wow, Amy. Amy says Dallas Buyers Club was huge. My mom worked at Parkland Hospital in Dallas. Then it was a very sad time. They were one of the only hospitals that offered free medical care for AIDS patients. Ugh. It just, it's, it's crazy to think that this is so near in our history. Like this, this wasn't that long ago that so many people lost their lives and suffered and died and nobody cared because of um, the homophobia that surrounded uh, the disease for so long. And ugh, it's, it's crazy. And now Tom's going to like, okay, thanks for that education, Dr. Drew. Let's bring it back to me. Am I a narcissist? Yes. You just went off a very important topic of Dr. Drew talking about the AIDS crisis and him being there boots on the ground, if you will. And you're going to go, anyways, back to me, thank As somebody who has been dubbed, like, the ultimate narcissist. Uh, well, I mean, t again, taking the conversation back to yourself, when he's talking about the AIDS crisis, it's pretty narcissistic, bruh. Yeah. Masses. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I took your, your test. Yeah. So how so deep do you want to get crisis. into this conversation? Is everything on the table? Can we go all the way down? Um, you know what? Yeah, why not? I think you would. I, I'm looking at you on special forces. I was thinking, oh, geez. Yeah, You're, he's, he's ready. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm used to, so, obviously, as you know, like being on a reality show. So let's let's buried. toast your Gia. Yeah, first. Oh, so cheers. Let's get into this. Oh, and Coors Light for Schwartz, who's just sitting there. I do love Schwartz's little Adidas Sambas. I think he's got those are very '90s shoes as well. What the hell kind of shoes is Tom Sandy butt wearing? Oh, it looks right, like right. oh my god, no. Mm -mm. Cheers, cheers, no, cheers, no. Guys. No. Do you guys see those shoes? No. Mm. Mm -mm. No. It's good. It's like a. Um, isn't that good? A little licorice. It's like a uh, Amaro kind of. Yeah. Right? Amaro and also kind of like an Aperol. Yes. Nice. Yeah. So I really like it. I like the consistency, the viscosity of it. Because a lot so of it tastes like, like it sure is not alcoholic. It tastes like it yeah. should have alcohol in it. Yeah. Mm, that's what we're wondering, Dr. Drew. There's a lot of you know, botanicals. A lot of, lot of aromatics. So it's good. It's got mushrooms in it, Dr. Drew. Be careful. Get your gear, everybody. Mm -hmm. So, uh, all right. So, what made you think you're a narcissist? Did you think so before all this shit at the, the fan? Of course or? he didn't. Um, I did not actually. <laughs> because <laughs> I. Um, <laughs> I feel like people, you know, like we're doing drag one time. I had some, uh, uh, somebody who was interviewing me say that that was narcissistic doing drag. All right, let's, let's, people, I feel like people think that somebody who's like a performer yeah. or, uh, so, so he, I'm sorry, what? Who told him that doing, doing drag was the least narcissistic thing you ever did? What are you talking about? Here's the, well, I have some actual, I have the only published research on celebrities and narcissism. Mm, okay. And one of the things we found is that, that reality contestants, back when we did the study, by the way, reality participants tend to be more narcissistic than, than other performers. But mostly the women is what we had studied. And the women wow. were way up. Uh, doesn't mean you it's sexist assholes. Of course, it always comes back to the freaking women. But not the men. The penises are safe. It's the women who are the narcissists. <sighs> Still the same now, but that was our finding. Tom's right? like, exactly. That's what I was thinking, right? Schwartz and Schwartz is like, I'm not here. I'm never here. You guys ever think about, never mind. No, like Joe, like Joe, my gosh, she just opened up her Instagram and like, that's going to mean something one day. And you're like, mm, what are you talking about Schwartz? Back then. So you, 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 you're all people, you would already be suspect. So people look at a reality per, I don't know what, what word to use anymore. It's like reality star, porn star, kind of this, like this star, the right word. Or what do you, yeah, what do you call yeah, it anymore? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A part, reality performer, yeah. whatever. Um, uh, or, or suspect of being narcissist already. Right. Yeah. And I feel like because I'm so used to being asked about what is this voice and and I feel like because I'm so used to being asked about my personal life about my personal life because we're on a reality show where I'm encouraged to talk about our feelings and yeah, life, yeah. all the details everything yeah that I end up in conversation just talking about myself a lot of course you know <laughs> the reality tv is supposed to be your job not your identity tom you should be able to separate yourself from that I don't hang out with my friends and like, hey, I, I don't do my material and do my whole act. I just hang out with my friends. You, I mean, I, it baffles me that this guy can be 76 years old, receiving Social Security and not understand how work goes. Anyone's job, a doctor 
let's say a surgeon's not going to come home and be like, honey, I'm cutting you open tonight because it's all I know how to do because every day people ask me to open them up. <laughs> so I guess I can only do it to you, you know, an accountant's not going to come home and just, you know, oh, I got to do accounting. It's all, I'm just numbers. I don't even speak one, two, four, five. I'm no, what is he talking about? No, yeah. Just you're, you're not it. Right. I, I talk a lot about medicine. Uh, people want me to talk about that. Yes. When you're asked to, of course, red carpet and stuff. Yes. Okay. Dr. Drew interviews. Come on, bro. That's why they're talking to me. They're talking to you because you're on a reality show. And that's what they want to talk about. Oh, right? Yeah. We've got lighthearted interventions about this, Tom. You make sure to ask people about themselves as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a little narcissistic. They should have to say that. <laughs> but, 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 but let's keep going. Let's Wait, go what down did Dr. Drew just say? I talk a lot about medicine because people want me to talk about that. That's why they're talking to me. They're talking to you because you're on a reality show. And that's what they want to talk about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We've okay. got lighthearted interventions about this, Tom. You make sure to ask people about themselves as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a little narcissistic. They should have to say that. <laughs> yes, he's narcissistic. I mean, I think that's Schwartz just brings up a great point. Like, no, Tom, I have to remind you to ask about other people. But, but, <laughs> but, but let's keep going. Dr. Drew, red flag, Dr. Drew, red flag. There's a flag on the play. My husband will appreciate that if he's watching. Flag on the play. I don't know what that means, but flag on the play. Something's going on. Let's go down the roadways. So, so you grew up in St. Louis. How uh, many um, I, have, I have a brother and a stepsister. And your brother's older or younger? He's older. Older. And your family of origin? What were they like? Your parents, uh, biological parents. Oh, they're. He owes them money. They divorced early. How old were you? I was like seven. Okay, that's sort of a, a tender age for that to happen, right? Yeah. Um, they were always very encouraging. Okay, uh, you're, you're zipping right past the divorce. Yeah. A painful period. Um, it was a little just weird and bleak, but it, bleak. A little. For a seven-year-old, bleak's a pretty strong word, right? Seven-year-old Jewish. Doctor Drew is thera bleak is therapizing, therapizing, years. therapizing um, him. I just remember. You know, our we were getting ready to move into this like really beautiful house, this nice subdivision, mm -hmm. twin chimneys, and it was a big house. And then you know, it's like my dad ended up staying in this house, you know, in Florissant, and then my mom moved into an apartment, and it just seemed like I don't know, like we were like kind of like what more we were like living more like lower middle class, and then like did, what, did you go to the apartment with your mom or did you stay with your dad? Oh, both, both. So. Yeah, they were both pretty. I mean, obviously there was you know contention at first, you know. You know what happened? Yeah, I mean, I think this message is sponsored by Diet Squirt, Tom Sandoval's drink of choice. Also, every serial killer loves Diet Squirt. My mom just they, they just kind of made me grew apart and my dad maybe became a little bit I feel weird talking about this. Cause if, if, you, if you don't want to, you don't you don't have to answer any of my questions. It's all I, stuff I you're like, with. We don't, and we do not want to hurt anybody else. Right? That's the thing is yeah. I don't want to like put anybody yeah. on bus. But, you know, like well, what, I, what I'm looking for, he's asking for how you felt about the divorce. I think that, you know, um, with empathy, Erica Jane, I can understand that he doesn't want to throw his parents under the bus, especially since he owes his mom a lot of money. A quarter of a million is a lot of money. Um, I've, you know, I think as you become an adult, you struggle with that, with your, you know, family of, you know, being able to um, vocalize your experience without feeling like you're hurting your parents or the people who took care of you and, and, and loved you. Like you're not betraying them, but you're still able to tell your truth and how things affected you or how you felt. For what there's I'm, nothing like crazy. What I'm looking for is, is were you around cheating and stuff, or cheating something that happened in intimate relationships in your in your family um, religion. My mom did start seeing somebody towards the end of their relationship. Ooh, maybe that's why she's borrowing money because she's like, it's my fault. I did this, but again, we're blaming the woman. <laughs> So that was the final nail, at least, as far as you know. Which yeah. Is common, right. When my dad came, was kind of obsessive, compulsive, mm -hmm. in the, in the relationship towards the end, he was like checking on my mom. Became very insecure and sure, you can imagine, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if that had an effect on me or not. What do you mean? This? Of course, it's going to have an effect on you. I, I just can't understand. The, uh, this guy says he went to therapy, but there's no way you went to therapy. All these things affect people. You carry trauma with you. And trauma is like, um, um, I think it was uh, uh, Evelyn, the wonderful Evelyn is talking about. It's a spectrum. Like everything's basically a spectrum. So just because you think this is the most traumatic thing and no one got murdered in your home doesn't mean you didn't experience some sort of trauma. And the breakup of a family can be extremely traumatic for a young kid. You're headed down a certain path and then you know, uh, that path is, is destroyed. And the mom and dad unit is now, you know, mom over here, dad over there. That's going to be hard for a kid. It's very common, but that doesn't mean it's easy. Like recognize it, sir. Take yourself out of the reality TV brain. Like, hello. It, it has to have some, I'm not saying, I'm not being so glib as saying, Oh, if you're, you know, parents, you're going to, I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying, Hmm, it, it, it's got to affect you. 
And I don't know how yet. I mean, it's, it's got to affect you, even if it's just a childhood trauma. You know, we have difficulty being close to people. Or you, we'll sort of talk more. I mean, what, what the effect of all that is. Were you otherwise in anything unpleasant growing up? Everything else was okay? Everything was all right. I mean, yeah. me and my brother took karate class. I was cool. Um, I dealt. Why are you talking about karate class? <laughs> How, did, how, how does this brain, this dude's brain work? It's like mushroom induced at all times. Awesome. Awesome. Remember, everything I say is alleged, entertainment purposes only. However, everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. Jiu Jitsu right down the street here. Yeah. Are you guys get involved with that? Or no, no, no. Okay. Uh, Jack Osborne's been asking me to come roll around. Is that mess. is that his place? No. I don't think so, no. but um, I think he's further out. Mm -hmm. Van Nuys area. But uh, yeah, I. I remember dealing with some like insecurity. I kind of like gained weight and I became a little introverted. How old were you? Uh, fourth grade. It is interesting. A lot of times in LA, especially being around men who might have been kind of like um, considered like the the chubby kids or had weight issues uh, when they were younger. Men really, uh, the LA men, that's all I can speak on. They really carry that with them. I'm sure, you know, every child that's dealt with something like, um, weight issues are being teased like that but these LA men they really carry it with them and they almost become obsessive about their own bodies and I've seen that in like old 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 friends of mine and it's almost like they have something so much more to prove and they can't uh they're still living in that old body that old time um in their life and it's it's very interesting so there's just like almost like this chip on their shoulder this resentment that they carry with them what I've found and I think LA only adds to you know their insecurity with you know their crazy uh you know body image and and standards that they have so it is interesting i know so many men in la that struggled uh with their weight or were like the considered like the overweight kid and teased and then now they're just like look at me now and they're but they're still bringing up like that 11 year old self because they really haven't processed uh their feelings on it right so depressed probably right yeah, yeah. a little bit yeah um I was, I had trouble like staying awake in class. Yes, and body dysmorphia. Yes, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that, that, that falling asleep in class and having the sleep disruption. That's depression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Are you prone to depression? Has that always been the case? Or is that maybe a, a little bit? Were you depressed in New Zealand? Um, I don't think so. No. You look a little depressed. Man. Maybe a little it's bit. It's hard to stay depressed when you're, when you're going through all that. Yeah. <laughs> right? Are you still numb while you were there? Or did oh, you you're having numbing? Numbness feelings? Or no. Were you numb while you were filming the show? No. I thought you told me that you kind of felt. What's it? I, you know, my numbness of being under the you're like hypnotized by the staff. I mean, you just do yeah. whatever they tell you. It's like it's the craziest experience. Yeah, you're all you're, you're not you're numb isn't the right word. <laughs> I guess I was referring what was Schwartz talking about numb with like alcohol and drugs? Right to aftershocks from the whole, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really liked how busy we were with things because yeah. it got me to not think about good, yeah, good, yeah, kind of what I figured. So, so you had depression. When did you come out of that? Uh, I don't know. I kind of like, you mean like recently or like he had like depression for a week. He was out all, all the time blaming everybody else. I just, this whole, I, I know there are different levels of depression for sure, for sure, for sure. I battled with depression. I'm sure most people in the chat have battled with depression. Um, I mean, the guy never fucking disappeared. He never shut up and he never disappeared for a little bit. Like in, I mean, did you stay depressed through your adolescence? Did you come I, out of it? I dealt with it, yeah, during my mm -hmm. adolescence. Uh, you find sports? Okay, he's talking about when he was younger. Sure, sure. Sports or a social I did get or back. I kind of quit sports younger, and I struggled with, like, because, you know, it's like you're supposed to play soccer, you're supposed to play baseball. I have bad eyesight. Why are you supposed to play soccer? Who told you you're supposed to play soccer? Your parents? Your neighborhood? Keeping up with the the Jones? The Johnsons? What is it? Keeping up with the Smiths? Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Who told you? And I was afraid of the ball. Mm -hmm. And then <gasps> He was afraid of the ball. And, um, didn't he get glasses? I'm, I'm confused. So this I'm is a lot. Nervous playing baseball, and sometimes I'd embarrass myself. And then, like, then eventually in high school, I, I found like uh, wrestling contacts and track, and that was something that I really liked. I Good. did well in pole vaulting. I did well in wrestling. Okay. When did you sort of come out? When... So, uh, I have to rewind. I know I don't want to, but I have to rewind this. So you had bad vision. Your parents maybe didn't take you to lens crafters. They should have. Sorry about that. But. How did that change? And then all of a sudden you can, you can wrestle. So are you nearsighted? I'm like, cause I'm nearsighted. I, did get back. I kind of quit sports younger and I struggle with like, cause you know, it's like you're supposed to play soccer. You're supposed to play baseball. Mm -hmm. I have bad eyesight. And then I was afraid of the ball. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so I would get nervous playing baseball and sometimes I'd embarrass myself. And then like, then eventually in high school, I, I found, I embarrass myself all the time. I played sports. I embarrassed myself. I got hit in the head a lot. That's kind of the, what happens like uh wrestling mm. and track and that was something that i really liked I did well in pole. Ooh, when he said wrestling 
his eye left. It was something I really liked. Rolling around. I think I did well in wrestling. Mm. Okay. When did you sort of come out? When did you sort of find yourself? So to speak? I found myself. In... He does have a little bit of cauliflower ear. Now that I'm looking at it from the wrestling, maybe a little fun guy. Mm hmm. Those little cauliflower ear. Always know a wrestler. The summer before eighth mm -hmm. grade. And what was happening there? There was a key moment, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of funny because <laughs> that I suck doesn't Rachel make you me this girl. Um, <gasps> oh! it was like my first love. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Are you really saying this, Tom? Tom's about to tell us that Rachel reminds him of this girl who was his first love. Midlife crisis in full effect. What's happening there? There was a key moment, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of funny because Rachel reminds me of this girl. Um, it was like my Oh my god, leave Rachel out of it. She is like in the woods frolicking on Instagram. First love. Mm. Basically, I went to space camp. I know it sounds crazy, but I went. This to... sounds crazy. Sounds nerdy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mom, went to space my mom camp. Let me go to space camp because my brother would go to these baseball camps yeah, yeah. and like. That's right. It's... So she's like, "Is this something?" I'm like, "Yeah, that sounds cool." Like. And I Sponsored went, by like, Squirt, paying Jolene every time like she puts a picture where, up. You know, so he's like, "Oh, like, do you like this girl?" No, I don't like, like whatever. And like, this guy like threw me under the bus. He was like, "Tom, didn't you say you like Megan?" And I was like, "I just like remember like it was a key moment in my life mm. where I would have normally been like, dude, shut up and like whatever," but I literally just looked at her right in the eyes and i smiled and mm. i said yes mm. and like everything from that moment changed mm. like i started i came out of my shell i like mm. started like exploring with like believing in myself mm -hmm. and like my own flavor my own vibe mm. my own mojo mm -hmm. like i would get into like dance contests when i was a kid like in the talent shows like in in uh st ferdinand and in, in, in catholic school growing up there would be like 20 girl acts and then one guy act it'd be me and i've won like pretty much every year he was the Corey um, feldman of his school like really helped me so so performing sort of so performing was very rewarding for you performing helped it was a way for me to sort of be social mm. it was a nice little uh safety like way or a help like a, like a jump start being social with people mm -hmm. so like mm -hmm. when yeah. i came back to school in eighth grade everything changed yeah. like there was everything changed for me in eighth grade too because i got tits yeah seventh grade no tits eighth grade tits got a boyfriend <laughs> I mean, go figure. <laughs> it would be, you know, the junior high dances, and it would be the guys on one side, the girls on one side, and then, like, I basically... I went from, like, a negative A to a C cup in eighth grade. My poor parents and my poor self. Uh, I, I didn't even know what to do. And all of a sudden, boys were like, hey, Julian. I'm like, mm, you didn't talk to me last year. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So you so were... became very popular, like, yeah. very quickly. Mm. Oh, the popular complex. Did it? Was there was there ups and downs with that, or just stay like that? It was ups and downs. Yeah. I, it, it kind of... What happened to, I feel like, Rachel, where, this, where the pendulum swung, I got overly cocky and confident yeah and so that's the narcissistic stuff okay and that's what you got overly confident you too amy yes like eighth grade i was like i got my period i got tits and then boys were like hey girl and i was like what you guys were all just dating my friend like okay like is this what this does is this what happens oh my god and ever since it has just been i'd like to just shave these things down a little bit i mean i don't need them so people are calling narcissism yeah, okay. like it happened though in like eighth grade. It happened really early. Yeah, for and me when in you life. say douche, was were you exploiting other people, manipulating other people? Oh wait, he was being a douche. Like, okay, let's hear changed. that again. Safety, everything like, changed. A, a help, like a, like a jump start to being social with people. Mm -hmm. so, like okay. when I came back to school in eighth grade, everything mm -hmm. changed. Yeah. Like there, Whoa. Would, there would be you know the junior high dances, mm -hmm. and it would be the guys on one side, the girls on one side, and then like I basically bridged the gap. So you so were... became... He's the hero in his own story every fucking time. Who the hell is the hero in their own story every freaking time? You got to give someone else a chance very popular like uh, very quickly that became very popular very quickly so far i don't feel bad for you <laughs> did it was there was there ups and downs with that or just stay like that? it was ups and downs yeah. I, it, it kind of what happened to i feel like rachel where this where the pendulum swung i got overly cocky and confident yeah and so that's the narcissistic stuff okay and that's what people are calling narcissism yeah okay. like it happened though in like eighth grade it happened really early yeah, for and me when you life. say douche was were you exploiting other people manipulating other people yeah i was like kind of being like I would like lead girls on and then just like, like, yeah. have my... huh, huh, funny how you didn't grow out of that. Thank you, chicken head PK Neely for the first super chat of the live. PK says period, sixth grade boobs, eighth. Oh, you got your period in sixth grade. My bestie got her period early in elementary school too. And I was like, oh, I was just like, I want it. And then I got it. And I was like, take it back. Take it back. Lord, take it back. Why yeah, God, I'm why? Them for mm -hmm. me and like, and then like, I would be like only wanting to like, what do you do? Would like lead girls on and then just like, like yeah. have my friend like break up with them for mm -hmm. me. And well, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I, uh, I was always like terrified to be like, I'm not interested because you know, guys would be like, well, I didn't like you anyways, bitch, you fat. And you're like, ah, ah, ah. so sometimes I would tell my friends like, can you just tell them that I don't like him? Or I think I had a girlfriend break up with a guy for me one time, but it was like childhood relationships, you know, me and like, mm -hmm. 
and then like i would be like only wanting to like date girls in eighth grade mind you mm. like if they were like cool and popular and then I <laughs> why would we... dude this is just like dude my publicist has never seen anything like this i only wanted to date girls in eighth grade who were cool and popular i only wanted to date boys who wore glasses and were named paul okay and had type 1 diabetes that's who i wanted to date that was just my preference but okay and then if i found somebody cool and popular like i would ditch them but this happened in a short period of time and then i kind of was like I can't remember the exact moment, but I was like, this is like not cool. And I remember this I was like, not cool. Like, did I ended up like ditching this girl that I had a crush on? Mm -hmm. And it was so stupid. And I like regretted it. So, did you find the capacity to empathize with other people? Did that, no, when didn't. did that happen? Like, ninth grade, I got like so, ninth so grade, I got the like, rug pulled out from underneath me. And like, all of a sudden, everybody started to like hate me and not mm -hmm. like me. Sounds familiar. <laughs> and so I was like, <laughs> Dr. Drew says sounds familiar. So it only took one year for people to suss you out. You couldn't even fake it until you made it in high school. Did he say by ninth grade everyone hated him? Reddit it. So did you find the capacity to empathize with other people? Did that okay? When did that happen? Like ninth grade, I got like so, ninth so grade. I kind of got early. that rug pulled out from underneath me, and like all of a sudden everybody started. It was such a short popularity um, stint. Like hate me and not like me. Sounds familiar. And so I was like, did this just happen a couple months ago? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Drew with the roast dragon. Tom, did this just happen? Sounds familiar. <laughs> Anyways, Dr. Drew out. Combat boot, Drew. Mm? So I, I realized early on, and from that point on, I became a much nicer person. Mm -hmm. um, um, I think people even would like expect me to be a lot more cockier than I was. And mm -hmm. I became this very like cool and nice. Sorry, what? You became a very cool and nice. I, this is, <clears throat> that's just like not how I would explain my childhood self cool and nice <laughs> and like something and like when, when you were in relationships how did you how how, how what were they like post eighth grade i was Maybe like more adultish you know yeah like from that point on i was pretty cool I, I, and would you would you be <laughs> scared of the person to leave yes, you? very would you be insecure would you be like, not how, what, what were your what were you like in romantic relationships i was pretty fun adventurous hmm. tom are you talking about what you would do with your wiener He's not talking about that. Pretty fun, adventurous, you know, slip and slides, forwards, backwards, blindfolded, not blindfolded, hanging from the ceiling in a park, on a park bench, on top of a guy sleeping on a park bench, you know, just like real adventurous. Uh, but like we just didn't care if the other person all of a sudden lost interest or, I or were you be, deeply? I was a little insecure sometimes. You keep using that word insecure. What does that mean? Exactly? <sighs> well, like this one girl I was dating in high school, like we were at a dance together and she ended up making out with my, like a friend of mine. Yeah. And then like, I also like you see it really nice to kind of this explains so much he's trying to get back at the girl from high school that made out with his best friend all those years ago because i was a good dancer i would like sneak in the clubs now a good dancer define good tom just like you have to define empathy define good dancer i'd be like hanging out with older girls mm -hmm. that were like already sexually experienced and i had no experience sexually and people would see me like because i was such a good dancer and i could move my oh my god that's he said good dancer like twice body they just assumed mm -hmm. that i was like just oh, they assumed you were a sex guy. You were a sex monkey. Ugh. See, because I was such a, a good dancer. Mm -mm. I was wearing jabos. And they, because I could pelvic thrust, they assumed I could get in where I fit in. Guru in bed. And I had no a guru. Idea. Not a guru, weirdo. I had no idea what I was doing. And I would get like really nervous. And I like couldn't Hell were you? get like an action. Hell were you? This is like way more information than I need. I was like, 15, 16. Oh no. Oh no. Couldn't get an erection. Maybe because you were a baby. 15, so that's bordering on, you know, childhood trauma. As boy, you know, if you're if you're if you were 14, now you're getting into a zone where your brain can't really manage all that. Yeah. So that's interesting. You have such a good dancer, Dr. Drew. So the sex part just didn't come naturally, but the dancing. Would, I had like an issue. Yeah, I just I had an issue like I didn't So you were uh what's it called when you you don't get a boner. Um, you needed the Viagra. Well, you were too young for the Viagra, but um, not incontinence. That's when you pee, pee I think, yourself. Um, uh, boner delayed? No, that's not. You guys will put it in the chat. I didn't want to, like, like go too far with girls because, like, they would just basically expect me to take over and I had no idea what I was doing. And I would get really... Nobody knows what they're doing when they first start doing the, the sexies. Nervous. Sure. Oof, sounds all very traumatic. Oh, yeah. so traumatic. You couldn't get a boner. And he was such a good dancer and people expected him to just take over in bed. And he was like, where's the vagina? Where is the vagina? I cannot find the vagina. And one girl stopped me and she was like, Tom, that's my nostril. And I was like, I always thought that was the vagina. Thank you, Anne. Erectile dysfunction. Yeah, I didn't finally get comfortable sexually or finally have a Until Rachel.
consistent sexual partner until I was like graduated high school and I moved to Chicago. Okay. And I like oh Chicago, yeah, that's where guys get the good boners. Good boners. Never went to college, but can stay awake in class. How old do you know? Still have trouble staying awake. Yeah. yeah. Can stay awake in class. How old do you know? Uh, forty. Okay. To add a couple years, Tom. Add a couple years, Tom. Do you see how he's like? Uh, like we got to slow that down because that is. And the lie detector determined that was a lie. To Chicago. Okay. And I, like, I never went to college because I couldn't stay awake in class. How old do you know? Yeah. Still had trouble staying awake. Yeah. How, how old do you know? Uh, 40. Okay. When people ask me, how old are you, Jolene? 43? He's like, uh, uh, 40. Sir, where were you when Kennedy was assassinated? Okay. You were there. You were there. You were watching it live on the TVs. Tom, stop, Tom. Tom, stop lying. That's not how you answer that question. One more time with feeling. I moved to Chicago. Okay. And I, like, I never went to college because I couldn't stay awake in class. How old do you know? Yeah. Still had trouble staying awake. Yeah. How, how old do you know? Uh, 40. Uh, 40. What does my Wikipedia say? Oh, my God. Okay. Even Dr. Drew doesn't believe it. He's like, okay. 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 Sure. Good story. I did. Mm. I had a long-term relationship. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a real show, Mims. This is a real, this is his podcast that he thinks we all need to hear. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Lexi. Born in 1940 does not equal 40 times. Stop it. Ship in Chicago, we lived mm -hmm. together. That was it, not great. How did that end? She get really mean and we just, I just ended up like. Oh, it's her fault. It's always her fault. It's always the girl's fault. She was really mean. Not me. I was great. I mean, I couldn't get a boner, but I was great. I don't know exactly who broke up with who, but. I can remember who broke up with who in all my relationships. I can remember if I was dumped, if I was the dumpy or the dumper. W was she complaining about anything in particular when she would get mean? His hair. I think she had insecurities and she would take it out on me. Insec Dr. Drew, this just screams narcissist. I don't even have to have a PhD. Okay. Uh, sir, it's ever, it's, it's her insecurities. Not you just got done telling us for damn near 20 minutes how insecure you are but now it was her insecurities thank you insecurities meaning you're you like of, of herself fear that you were gonna leave or fear that you were cheating or what do you she mean just like, like i don't know i smoke cigarettes she's like if <laughs> he has a dumb story he wrote i have a dream he stood on those stairs in washington in dc and he said i have a dream that one day i will get in a boner all right and that um women will allow me to cheat on them I mean, my God, my God. Um, Amy said, someone asked him what year he was born. I bet he can't do the math. He can't do the math that quickly. That's too hard, Amy. That's too hard. If you smoke cigarettes, I don't want to be with you huh. type thing. Like that kind of controlling. Are you kidding me? That is not a controlling. That is definitely a preference in dating. If you are not a smoker, you then don't want to date a smoker. You're like, don't smoke. It stinks. You're nasty. You know what I mean? But if you're a smoker, you're like, get what? You never hear people go, I only want to date a smoker. You hear people go, I don't want to date a smoker. Now, there's nothing wrong if you smoke, but you might run into the, you know, problem of people not wanting to date a smoker. Leave or fear that you were cheating or what do you she mean? She's just like, I don't know. I smoke cigarettes. She's like, if you smoke cigarettes, I don't want to be with you. Huh. Type. That seems logical. That's not hater. That's not insecure. That's like she didn't want to stink like smoking. She didn't smoke and she wanted you to live a long life, uh, you know, with healthy lungs. She doesn't want you to get COPD, brah. Thing like that kind of controlling in that way. And controlling. This guy just doesn't know the meaning of words. Like English is very foreign to him. Okay. How do you what what was that? Is Schwartz supposed to finish the story? Did you see the way he looked at Schwartz? Cigarettes. She's like, if you smoke cigarettes, I don't want to be with you huh. type thing. Like got kind of controlling in that way. And Okay. How do you What is did you did what is how, did you guys see that? Okay, let me take down the squirt. Thank you, squirt, for paying me. Um, allegedly. Okay. So. Cigarettes. She's like, if you smoke cigarettes, I don't want to be with you. Huh. Type thing. Like, that kind of controlling in that way. And Okay. How do you <laughs> What the oh, hell was that? that? Yeah, I was gonna say I'm kind of riveted. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little, I'm a little quiet, but I'm kind of riveted because we've known each You're other, bored. we can do so much together. But I don't know the details of your your origin story or, or some of your trauma. You know, we've only brushed over a lot of this stuff. It's his Marvel hero origin story. So I'm, I'm just, I'm. Is it surprising to you? A little bit. Yeah. Quite. Yeah. First of all, I'm impressed that you have such a great memory. I'm jealous because <laughs> my, my 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 youth. My... I, I'm I'm impressed that he's going to be so self-disclosed, which is I think really important. I'm not impressed. Yeah, I'm a little self-conscious because I'm like I. 
I don't know if like people want to hear this or not. So they, they, whether they do or they don't, they will attack. I mean, they will have their thoughts about it. It's okay. going to be. Um, but if they do spend the time to listen and attack, they spend the time to listen. They're interested. Um, I think ultimately, <sighs> understanding each of us as humans makes us more it's always the woman's so fault. Shit. We just all do. And when we, yeah, but Dr. Drew, why don't, why are you not picking up on the theme here that it's always blame a woman? My mom's fault. The first girl that I told I like, she changed my life. And then I got popular and then I just, ugh. And then, you know, oh, this first girl, she's trying to control me. You know, women, same way it's Ariana's fault. She didn't get batteries and paper towels. And, you know, she didn't want Willie in a relationship it is crazy. The origin story of a villain, he's the lean into this villain thing if he's really not going to get better. Because this is getting old, sir. Super old. All right. Oh, good. I finally found the one that I was looking for. This one. Things happen in, in the present. It's, it's always attached to that stuff somehow, you know. And so I'm hoping people will be a little more empathetic to you. Why? He's not empathetic to anyone else or anything else. I don't, I don't understand this. I understand this whole narrative of like, you're going to be empathetic towards Tom. I can have empathy and still hold someone accountable and still be like, mm, you're fucking up. Mm, you're fucking up. For instance, um, you took the narcissism test. Mm -hmm. You do not measure, you're not measurably narcissistic. How can we trust what he says? Look what he said. How can you, they need a better test. Is there a blood test? A piss mm -hmm. test? Do your results? No, I didn't look at I didn't understand. So, that. You, you, I didn't understand. I had Tom Schwartz take it for me. <laughs> he probably had some. Jason probably took it for him. It's a test for narcissistic traits, really. It, it, it's not a way of diagnosing a disorder. Okay, can you like get a better test? But it's a way of showing traits. And you actually. He's shown us for years on TV the traits. She scored very low. Who took that test for you, Tom? Who took that test for you, Tom? Very low. The, the only thing you were slightly up on was vanity. Mm. Vanity. I can see. Vanity. <laughs> he shaves. His friggin' forehead. We know, Dr. Drew. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He cheated on that test just the same way he cheated on all of his girlfriends. He cheated on that test or someone else took it for him, which is still cheating. Jason, show me your hands. Where's Jason? He's busy taking the test. That's why he's not there. I can see by your fingernails. That that's, a, that's, a, that's a reasonable measurement of, of something that you're probably interested in, which is your parents. And we talked about style and all that stuff. So, fine. <clears throat> Neither good nor bad. It's just a trait, right? Yeah. And by the way, I, I encourage people always when they get very pejorative and judgmental of traits, traits, we have traits for reasons as human beings. They, they, they're adaptive in certain situations. So uh, please refrain from being too judgmental. Dr. Drew, stop. You stop right now. You stop that right now, Dr. Drew. Uh, but no, you were a seven. And uh, uh, average in these days is up towards 15, 16. Oh, wow. He's a 17. And, and so you're actually one of the lower ones I've seen. Oh, my God. You, this is just feeding his narcissism. Did it, done it, perfect. Thanks, Dwu. Wow. Which is interesting. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, Thanks, Jason. Good job. Jason Bader. Jason Mestabeda. Do you have any therapy or anything? Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. And He's got Dr. That? Jen, Erica's therapist. <laughs> therapy around, typically. Because sometimes that will bring the score down. Is it? Um, I mean, or is that recent? Is that since all this bullshit's gone on? Or yeah, I've been there recently. But nothing before? No, because Ariane already told us she tried to get him to, to therapy. They tried to do the therapy thing. He was very resistant to it. Um, and so instead she did work on herself. And then she was like, see you later, alligator. Um, I did a little bit. And why we? He went once. You're going. He crammed before the test. <laughs> yeah, swear, you know. He failed. Then. <laughs> he probably, you could probably Google how to pass. Let me see if you can Google this. Okay, you guys. How to pass a narcissism test. How to pass a narcissist. Oh, wait. Narcissism test. Let's see. How to identify a narcissist. Ridiculously simple scientific way to test. Three simple ways to test. No. How do you pass? Or what would be the way I want to ask this? How to cheat on a narcissist test is that what i want to say how easy is it for a narcissist to pass a polygraph okay you got that what is a weak what is the weak spot of a narcissist a monumental weakness in the narcissist is the failure to look internally and flesh out what needs to be worked on hello that is tom sandy Butt. then of course the next step is to spend time improving the narcissist sabotages any possibility of looking deep within uh-huh uh-huh mm-hmm Mm -hmm. Okay, this is how candidates cheat. I found the site. 
um, uh, Dream Talent says, this is how candidates cheat personality tests. Are you narcissistic? That's it. Surprisingly, um, how do you measure if someone is narcissistic? Researchers have developed a test that comprises, <laughs> comprises of one question. Are you narcissistic? That's it. <laughs> okay, so you can fake personality tests. Um, uh, there's a ha the Hawthorne effect was a popular case study originally to find out if better lighting could make factory workers more productive. Okay. Types of biased response styles, social desirable responding. Okay. There are many ways a candidate could fake answers in a personality test. Here are some of the biased response styles recruiters should look out for social desirable desirability responding social desirability responding sdr or social desirability bias is the tendency to pick answers that would make them seem more favorable in front of others i.e socially desirable candidates would tend to over report exaggerate themselves when the question is about their positive aspects for example if the question asks i like helping others they would answer yes even if they really don't just because they think that's the answer the recruiters are looking for. On the other hand, they tend to underreport, play down negative behavior, like I never lie and answering no. This is uh, because such behaviors are socially desire undesirable, especially to the, the, okay, so they're just talking about all the ways in which you can. So there's, I mean, you, you can get around this shit. You can get around this shit. Let's keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's a low score. <laughs> um, really, only I, I get therapy like early on in life, like through my parents. Okay, through the divorce. And, okay, and, right. So, do you still feel insecure for those sorts of? Things? Yeah, I think it's something that is hard to test. And the, like Mtronics is saying, yo, I was in therapy for ten years because I have narc parents. They're sociopaths, pretty much. Really good at trickery and duping tests, etc., etc., etc. And if Tom is actually talking about, you know, being um, an addict and. Uh, I mean, who knows? He's like, I'm sober. I was like, what does that mean for you? You know, and, um, you know, addiction makes us as a recovering alcoholic myself, when you're active in addiction, you know, you can, uh, you can be very deceptive and manipulative and, and hide things very well. And you learn to kind of do that. So, and Tom did dupe a lot of people over the last 10 years on the show. I mean, Dr. Drew, you're gonna have to spend more time with him than just giving him a little questionnaire. Yeah, of course okay. I do at times. Right. And, and thank you for sharing that, Mtronics. Probably... Thank you so much for sharing uh, that very personal information. Low score. You know, narcissists don't let them feel themselves feel insecure. They're just real big. They feel, you know, they give. He says he's insecure, but doesn't even know what that means. His insecurity is like, well, I mean, like, um, well, um, my boner, yeah, my boner didn't always work sometimes, and the girl I was dating wanted me to quit smoking. They get what they need from the environment to make themselves feel that way. They don't tend to feel insecure though if they if you really get in what's going on underneath they're very insecure but narcissism is about putting a pseudo self on top you know that's what he you does know, which you might sometimes do when the cameras are rolling or would that be a fair assessment or is that i think schwartz is diagnosing him as a narcissist and dr drew should be listening to tom schwartz tom schwartz is low-key like no he's a narcissist you do that you act like that that's tom the only thing he's contributed is pointing in in the direction of narcissism towards tom Sandy butt. Harsh. Or is that think, just performing? I think it's authentic, but I sorry. think that I am very comfortable in the fact right, Valerie, that it I is. don't know it all. I'm willing to ask questions. I'm willing to accept the fact that I don't know it all. Um and yes, Tammy, I good know point. that I need help in life. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why hey, Miss T. I I knew that I because I've been around narciss narcissist yeah. people with narcissistic yeah. traits, yeah. much stronger ones. Hell, they're on our show. Who? Oh, they're on your show. I think he's talking about Lala. Joe. Yeah. And I mean hasn't he said that about lala in the past well i i know like what it's like or jacks and i just know that i'm not those people right and i know that like no you want to feel above and better than them people but you don't know because there is no scientific proof that you are not like these people i don't have it all figured out do you attract narcissists i don't think so mm. i try not to be around them too much mm. like i can see it and i get uncomfortable and i don't mm -hmm. like it and then I'll, you know but have you ever been involved with alcoholics romantic relationship you himself how to set this problem yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, and every time he's go? kind of like doesn't want to talk about it you know the age the alcoholism he grabs his his, his beverage it's like his security binky what did you try to do in those situations i mean did you try to fix them 
when I had when I was in relationships with people that had issues, I would always try to help fix that. Okay. Oh, he's a savior. Doctor, you forgot. He's always the hero. I helped. I tried to help Ariana. She was so damaged. And I wasn't. It was very stressful at times. In, in a healthy way or like seeing a complex way. way. Yeah. Tom Schwartz is calling his ass out in this. In a healthy way, Tom, or in a savior complex? In a savior complex way, Schwartz. <laughs> Your best friend is straight calling you out. Steady calling you out. <laughs> healthy way sir what? it's not because you care it's because he likes to be the savior he wants to jump in he's that person that'll be like let me help you with that and you're like i didn't ask for help nor do i need help with this but he's like no no i know better he's the classic man spreader mansplainer it's oh my god well yeah would you stay in the relationships even though they wouldn't get better <laughs> yes yeah that's not yeah because he wanted to save them for his own ego his own self so so oh my yeah, god. I'm, I'm kind of thinking of a certain kind of situation that, that people are missing. Uh, and so can you talk about this? I have <sighs> I, I heard about it in the, I hear in the background, you know, and mm -hmm. sorry, something happened. But were you married or did you have a girlfriend or was it? I had a girlfriend of nine years and lived together. We came up together. Dr. Drew, um, you didn't even like, do the research. Show, like, kind of like oh my our God. success built together. Yeah, yeah. And so everyone's identified you guys together, right? Yeah, I mean, they pretty much considered us yeah. married. Right. They were kind of like the last <laughs> couple standing, the last OG couple and kind of like the model goals couple, right? And how did it feel when you were being presented as this model in spite of, let's say even before you cheated? I'm sure you're already being presented as, as they're perfect. How did you, did you have any personal quiet thoughts of your own about that? We were always a little misrepresented and I felt a little guilty at times because there was a lot of things that we, because of her, her choice, we wanted to keep hidden. When so again, not Tom's fault, it's Ariana's. He says, per her choice, I felt guilty. I wanted to come clean, but this bitch would not let me because you know how these bitches be, Dr. Drew. He can never take accountability for anything. It is freaking I mean, this shit needs to be studied. Future women, look at this. If you ever come in contact with a man like this, run like hell. Run. Hide. No. This is so problematic. When do you think for you that relationship kind of is ending? If you hadn't been on TV, maybe. maybe Probably when he, he fucked your friend when Ariana's grandma died and their dog died. Probably was like it's probably over. Find a way to ask it. If you hadn't have been on television, how many years before would you have ended this thing? Um, and if it's going to hurt somebody, textbooks, to answer, answer, a textbook you know, case, Valerie. I don't know yes, exactly that. The answer to that because it was he's unlikable. Know, he's that unlikable. That yeah, it's probably hard to tell because you were you had this thing you were presenting to the world too. And how could you even have those feelings at that point? I started to kind of because again, Hi, Alex. Like, the sexual like um insecurity came mm. back into my life interesting there was a lot of scolding going on in the bedroom there was a lot of like yeah psychology like, 101 and like just in it i felt so defeated and so insecure and by who when rachel came about oh god there was a couple things oh, first god. here Rachel's we go the one you cheated with. yeah here we go I, she made him feel alive she made him feel good because ariana was so mean to him she held him accountable and wanted him to be a real big boy, a man. Oh, evil Ariana. She was really coming out of her shell, and it was a very exciting thing to see. Because mm. you thought you were saving her, Tom. You had the savior complex. You were like, oh, Rachel, it's exciting. I can guide you. I can gloom you, if you will. For me. Mm. And I always like, when I see, I always want to help people out. Because that's what happened. Mm. But it's not authentic. Like, it's only because it benefits your ego, brah. Right? Yeah. And, and it's a wonderful situation then for someone like him, because then you can manipulate that situation. You're almost, you can have control. You can control someone like Rachel, who's just coming out as he's saying, who isn't as, you know, opinionated as Ariana, isn't as intelligent as Ariana. So you have this woman who he deems to be like a big dummy and she's just newly discovering this world. And so now the power dynamics off and he's got more power because he's been doing this longer. He's old as fuck. Like, you know, so she's young and he's like, yeah, baby, I can help her. She's like a wounded gazelle. Did somebody help you when you were coming out of your show? Or were you on your own with that? I kind of was on my own. Then give a shout out to Usher. He was a big source of He wasn't around when I came out of my show. Oh, I thought that was like your... It was that, that was later. Okay. He's a nice Schwartz, cool. please stop. All that. right, so Rachel comes out of her show. You're attracted to her. Oh, sure. I'm seeing her, like, and I just want to help her. Like, I go to her, like, her uh, beauty pageant, and I'm, like, asking her what she's into because I'm, like, you should, I'll help you. I'll help you. Like, well, you're into Pilates. Like, oh. Wait, your girlfriend wasn't concerned about that? When you no, were we all were. We were all collectively. You, all you guys, there are so many signs, especially if you look at Richella. 
There's so many signs. The fact that Tom, you know, he it led us to believe the edit and stuff that it was just because he wanted to plan this for him because Ariana was never going to give him the marriage that he wanted. And so he was really into love and he wanted to. But now it looks so nefarious looking back, seeing him plan and put in this time for Rachel's engagement to James Kennedy. It's sick. And that, I think, Jada, is like, oh, I mean, that was just a huge clue that this guy was, you know, either already hooking up with her or he was trying to buy his way in. Oh, that's real sick, real sick. Or see her growth yeah. and her, like, journey. Yeah. What are you, her dad? I want to see her growth and her journey. What are you, her therapist? You were just a random drunk guy on a reality show with her. Calm down. And she went from being very introverted and people pleaser to more like getting her like personality and like you know, getting her personality. Oh, he did like the right by the tits. Exciting to watch. And I'm literally at that time, I was like trying to like grow up with Schwartz. And I was very. No, you weren't. You were hooking up with her. That was gross. You wanted your friend to hook up with her because you hooked up with her and you only wanted Schwartz to hook up with her so she could stay near you and you guys could keep hooking up. And there would be a reason for her always to be around. We're not dumb, Tom. You cannot rewrite history on this. We were there. We remember it all came out. Well, almost all of it very like excited about that were you a people pleaser maybe because you want to have a threesome at one point yeah I, I, that's I your thing for sure and and so this thing grabs happened. his drink what's Friends, true right? what's true and then all okay. of a sudden it's like it like came on to me and yeah. a feeling she came out you guys again it's not tom's fault okay ariana made them lie about their relationship okay and the truth didn't come out he wanted it to rachel raquel Hit on him. When is this man going to go away? I don't understand people who are like, give him the redemption. No, go away. Go away. Or we're just going to keep roasting your ass up. Because you, it's sick. It's sick. How can anyone watch this and go, Tom's changed. He only blames the women. It's all the women's fault. Rachel, it was, I wouldn't have even cheated on Ariana except for Miami girl and those other girls. But it, Rachel, you know, it's the, it's just the oldest level of misogyny. It's so cliche. Like she was just... This temptress, this hoey, beautiful temptress. How could I say no to it? I'm only a man. I'm only a man. A feeling came over me and I started to feel it. I started to get feelings where I- It's called a boner. It's called your blood. You get a rager in the cager. It fills up your nut sack and then you just want to have sex. So, and I know it was- It's nothing special biology, sir. I told you that you reminded me of my first love. Mm. I told you she reminded me of my 14 year old first love. That sounds sick as fuck. Oh, mm. Megan. Mm. Not, why even say her name? Leave Megan alone. Justice for Megan. And like very much so. And when I met Megan. It's so sick that uh, she was 14 and Rachel Raquel reminds you of a 14 year old and you, yeah. And it's space camp. Mm -hmm. And not space camp. Rachel Raquel was not at space camp, Tom. She lived in maybe Hastings, space cadet camp Hastings, Nebraska. And like, why are we doxing her? She was in Hastings, Nebraska. Her name is Megan. Her social security number is six, two, six, six, five. Um, what are you talking about? It was like that sort of always that yearning feeling that like we would yearning rack up like hundred dollar phone bills. We would see mm -hmm. each other maybe once every two, three mm -hmm. years. And it was so magical and so exciting. Mm -hmm. And she was the most beautiful person on the planet is whatever was to me at that point. And like Rachel, like sort of like. I had not felt feelings like that since. If you were 14? Megan. Could Megan. You? Poor Megan. Oh, my God. We're so sorry, Megan. Megan, I'm so sorry. Megan, I'm so sorry. This is horrible. He legit straight up docs this woman. Who, it was the feeling of being unable to stop yourself? I think he thinks, like, he's grifting for Megan. He's hoping Megan hits him up. She's not going to hit you up. It was once like, that happened. Like you were just sucked like, in? The feeling was so strong yeah. that it was like, I literally. Tom, you're a six-year-old guy who had the hots for a 20 something woman who was in pageants. It's not fucking the most difficult thing to understand. You're going through a midlife crisis. You're old. You're slowly becoming irrelevant. Your show is probably going to get canceled. Not too long. Scandal brought it back to life. And uh, yeah, you got a boner for this young chick. I mean, it's not, it's, it, it, I don't understand. This happens all the time, especially in Hollywood. So there's nothing special about it. It still makes you a dickwad literally could only think about that yeah and then mm, that sounds like obsessive okay we talked about ocd in his past addiction why not and i was so stoked and so excited not so stoked i was so stoked to be around rachel 
I don't know, like Tom, we've all, we've all newly hooked up with someone and you get, you're stoked in the beginning. You're just, you're just so excited. That's like that rush of like, Oh, like it's not, he acts like he's like reinventing the wheel here. You know, everyone has felt that way, but we don't let that lead us in life. It doesn't give us a pass to act like a fucking asshole and a damn degenerate and a dishonest prick and then blame all the women and go, Oh, oh. you should have broke up with your damn girlfriend a long before you felt this boner about her. And if you didn't, fine, but you should have done it sooner than lying and trying to gaslight the audience into making Ariana and Katie the villains of the season when really the Toms were the villains of the season. And you were trying to make it so that Katie and Ariana would be the bad guys, you know, and uh, you could just replace them with Joe the hairdresser, who's not on crack, according to her, and uh, Rachel Raquel. It's really not that difficult of a concept. We get it. All of a sudden, I was like, I went from feeling so boot and so like. Were you really self conscious? Mm, okay. Not like not in business. <sighs> and so, like feeling like borderline manic sometimes. You know, but like, we're saying that you were there. You were yeah. there. You were watching all this. Yeah, no, yeah. You were, you oh, yeah. He was double dating. Uh, well, I told him just the standard stuff. I was like, well, have you talked to Ariana about it? And, um, you know, are you. And what prevented you from doing that? At this point, we were opening up our second bar together. Mm and filming tom sandoval hates women it's just a, it's a fact it's a fact he hates women i mean another point thank you jada for never forget the way he screamed in katie's mom's face the way he talks about women the way he treats women the way he blames women he hates women i don't care what he says the way he takes money from his mom and doesn't pay her back and is too busy talking about his love from when he was 14 and his boner he don't like us he doesn't like us mm -mm. he has shown no signs that he likes women and his behavior continues to show us that he hates us Ow doing cameos, working all the time. So there was too much secondary gain. He was out doing cameos. And to destroy all that. Working all the time. Yeah. I mean, even Boner drama. Where I did break up with Ariana. We were both on hold for like a job that paid us. Cause we were, we're like, we were famous. We were like a famous bartending duo, mm -hmm. which there's not a lot of them out there. So <laughs> stop it. Stop. Even Ariana wouldn't say you were a famous bartending duo. Get out of here, sir. Get out of here. You infiltrated her book. Oh my God. We were there. We saw the season. We saw the episode. She told you get your own dream. Stop. Um, we would get a lot Stop. of work that way. And we... could you have managed to continue to work? Oh, well, Lisa's a here? huge enabler. Did you ever think to yourself, I've got to tell her, I understand there's a career stuff in you know in the balance here. Is there a way we could keep working together, or we could present things to the world? And I had this delusional thought that that could happen. And Schwartz had just gone through a divorce with his wife, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm in therapy, <sighs> I'm working with a the therapist. I had. Ariana and I in couples therapy. Oh boy. And I'm trying to do this. What was the therapist, the couples therapist advising you to do? Now tell the real story about how Ariana told us about the therapy, Tom. Don't lie. Because you were not a willing participant in that. You were, mm -mm. She's like, you, you need to take action. We need to do this. We need to schedule, like basically like I was. Schedule what? This, schedule what? Like, schedule sex. And no, though, no, I told her my intentions. At that point, my intentions were to, to break up. Oh, so you 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 were honest in therapy that you needed to leave. Yes, we had gone so wrong without being loving and intimate. No, I get it. I, I, I'm I, surprised. I, I, you stayed in. That's your problem. That is your problem. That is not something that then justifies you going out there and betraying someone and continually blaming the women. By now, Scandival is just uh, this big compared to all of Tom's problems and how he treats women, um, and how much he hates women. I mean, it's. This is, this is, um, Scandival is a mere symptom of what it seems like has been building in this man for a very long time. And only because you're freaking telling us all this. You're showing us all this, Tom. We don't even have to speculate. It it as long like, as you did. I'm sorry. She stayed in as long as you did. He's like, oh, I couldn't even, I couldn't even have sex. Didn't Ariana tell you? I can't have sex with someone who's not here. Someone I'm not connected to. I think you're gonna have to learn that about women. Sure. When you're early on hooking up with someone, you might just bang it out. But I think for most women will agree. Now, granted, we are a varied species, you know, other women are going to feel other ways, but a lot of women are going to feel if we don't feel connected to you in a relationship, the sex life will suffer. And Ariana told you that instead of working on the connection or the problems within the relationship, you just went and fucked other people because you needed your sex now because now your boner worked because there was a time you told us your boner didn't work. And so you, you know, maybe this all comes down to he was afraid. I've experienced my boner not working before and at any minute it could just stop and it could go flaccid. Okay. And I don't want a lake flaccid wiener. So I got to get it in. Years of why, why did she stay in so long? Because to her, it was like, I, I, 
she just i don't know she didn't know anything else she couldn't imagine mm. like we had sort of like in a sense it could be because she loved you you know and you get in relationships and relationships do have ebbs and flows and they have ups and downs and rocky times and maybe she really felt like she committed her life to you just because she didn't want to get married and sign a piece of paper she really felt that commitment i mean she bought a house with you she let you take out of the house for your business take equity out of the home she believed in you maybe she thought it'll get better hashtag it gets better you ever think of that tom Maybe here. your penis wasn't that great. Maybe she didn't just love you for the sex, even though sex is a very important component in a couple's lives. Uh, maybe she 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 loved you. I don't get it. I don't. I honestly, honestly don't get it. But she loved you. Yeah, and like when we bought our house together, mm. we had just kind of realized like this is our thirty year commitment to each mm -hmm. other. See, it's a big commitment. Purchasing a property in California that you now still both of you can't get out of is pretty big commitment. Without marriage, that's why, that's why marriage is good. <laughs> You know, <sighs> did the therapist advise you guys to break up? Did you think that was a good idea? Or when you brought it time. up, did the therapist think it was a good idea? I didn't tell her what was going on. I, I, told, I understand. I told my therapist what was going on okay. with Rachel. I did not tell the couple's therapist. So she was initially advising to like work things, try to work things out, try mm. this for like six months. I was so insecure about losing Rachel mm. that I was like, almost like, oh no, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I've already. I would argue too that a lot of men feel that way, Amy, that there are a lot of men that want to feel connected to their significant other. Um, and their sex life. You know, I think we want to dumb down, you know, you have this like cliched view of women, women get all their feelings involved in men and just want to bang, bang, bang. But I think there's a lot of men who then want the connection with their wives or spouses or husbands as well. You know, they, they want to have that connection because that's what separates them from just a random hookup is the connection you have with your partner. I tried everything. I want to try. I gotta get How is this a novel idea to a 86 year old man like Tom Scandable? Yeah. And how long did it take? Very it different, Anna. I did until maybe about a month before it went down. Mm. And Ugh. boy, the therapist was not listening. Horrible. To not the couple's therapist. No, it's a shame. I don't think she cared for me too much. Well, she, I don't know if she cared for you or not, she just wasn't listening. Okay, is anyone taking a tally? Now it's the female therapist's fault. The woman therapist, her fault. Ariana's fault, Rachel's fault. 14 year old girl he can't get over's fault. Mom's fault for cheating. All the women are to blame. Now it's the woman therapist. She didn't like me very much. Yep, not my fault. Blame a vagina, find a vagina, blame a vagina. The uteri are bad, according to Tom. Yeah. Mm -mm, Tom, when does a man take the blame? Like him or anybody else? Sitting to you because you were pretty clear. What a mess. How is Dr. Drew? This, is, this makes me side eye Dr. Drew like this. How are you not noticing the pattern? Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Isn't that what, I mean, sir, sir, you're, no, you're not a dummy at all. You're a very smart man. How are you not picking up? That it's always a lady's fault. Blame a lady. Blame the tits. Blame the tots. Blame the menstruation station. Why are you not seeing this, Dr. Drew? This is a problem. This is like a freaking that Alfred Hitchcock. Who's that guy that? That guy. This is like the serial killer origin story. The women. This is Andrew Taint level woman hate at this point. Oh my yeah. God. And it, I always kind of thought, well, let me just turn over my cards. You, you sort of seem kind of codependent to me, right? You know what yeah. that is? Yeah. Yeah. I think you're more on the codependent side and less on the narcissistic I'm, side. I'm definitely codependent. Yeah. And, and codependency is it's a, it's a construct. It's, it's not a diagnosis. It, it's, a, it's a situation where <clears throat> it's very hard to assert yourself. It's very, very, I have it. I have codependency like crazy. I, I'd work on it to be, become effective. Your wife dresses you. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. That could just be what she's better at. Uh, Chickenhead, thank you so much for the super chat. Chickenhead said he said he did not tell the couple's therapist, but he did tell his own. What? His stories don't make sense. They don't make sense. Yes, thank you, Donna. Norman Bates. This is Norman Bates level misogyny at this point. Okay, you you swatted, you got it. And so, but but uh, it's really funny. But but it's you're not great with boundaries, and when you see people in pain. You have to make it stop and you think you have to you, you feel like you have to make it stop because you feel like an empathic person is concerned for the people but underneath it it's your own pain being mobilized that you have to make stop okay but he's not empathic and you have to be able to distinguish between your pain and other people's pain and it's very hard for us it takes a lot of therapy to do it. the other thing is there's a quality to some of these insecurities that feel immature do you feel immature with some of this yes he's immature look at him um sometimes yeah <laughs> oh sometimes <laughs> sometimes it is like I've 
feel like in he's a man baby here's what happened he was coddled he's a man baby women are still paying his bills women are still taking care of him women are still making excuses for him if you watch BravoCon, you saw not only lisa vanderpump but you saw lala kent make excuses for this man he showed up he did something who cares if he showed up he's getting paid it's a job let him show up when he's not getting paid let him actually give a shit let him disappear for a little bit i mean give i give props to rachel raquel for like disappearing for a while and going and getting help whatever that help looked like which it looked a little sus but still but he's had all these women enabling him making excuses for him which is problematic but i also think it's a lot of things that are conditioned in women is that we got to be you know captain fix a bro over here it's like well men they develop slower and we're just you know we, we got to help them and it's like no they can help themselves because it's only hurting us so when they're all just like trying to save Tom from himself, he should feel shame. He should have these feelings. Those are totally normal feelings. He doesn't need to be saved. He needs to save his gosh darn self. Because if this was a woman like Rachel, who's saving Rachel? Nobody. Nobody has from the beginning. Rachel was the bitch, the slut. And I'm not condoning anything Rachel did. But again, I've talked about this since Scandal broke. This is why it hits such a nerve with so many of us women. Because women are treated so differently than men in these situations. Women are branded for the rest of their lives as whores and you can't trust and sluts and men, men will be men. Come on. He's done his time. How much more can he possibly do? Oh, come on. He's just a guy. He's just a man. He's figuring it out. He's 50. He's fucking 50 years old. He's old as fuck. You should know better. If anything, Rachel should get more grace in because she actually has a pretty traumatic upbringing of like, oh, the 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 mom gave it to the sister and nobody talked about it. She felt like she had to change her name, and she's younger. He's fifty, and we're just like, no, you guys. He's lost everything. When Lisa Vanderpump said he's lost his friends, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. They're all still filming with him. He's still talking to him. He has tons of friends. I see him go out with all the time because he's all over. He's everywhere you don't want him to be. And he's lost his job. No, he's been on more TV shows than he's ever been on in his life. The guy is banking off of this. He's lost nothing. The only thing he's lost is this egotistical part of him that believed he was the good guy. That's the only thing he lost because the veil, the curtain is opened. We saw behind the curtain and he isn't the hero. Not at all. He's the bad guy. He's the villain. So he hasn't lost anything. His ego took a couple hits. But damn near barely showing up here with a, a freaking candy necklace and a, a sky high heels blaming all the women. No, I am not listening to that narrative. If I watch this season of Vanderpump Romans and all these women are sticking up for him, we will riot. Stop it. Make him own his own shit. Make him grow up. He is coddled like an mf -er. He's a man baby. Tales all this time song is all this rhyme. On fucking Bravo, Shep, man, baby, Austin, man, baby, Tom Schwartz, man, baby, Tom Sandoval, man, baby, man, baby, city, township, Jax, man, baby, Jax to this day is still like, well, Brittany, save me. Why does Brittany got to save you? Why does a woman got to save you? Why don't you save yourself? You're old as fuck too. And from the looks of Jax on the villain show, you're not saved. You're not safe. Thank you, Mtronics, for the super chat. Thank you for enduring this pain for us, Jillian. I'll always be here for you guys. We'll get through this together. We got to stick together because this shit is ridiculous. This dude is a goddamn predator the way the FaceTime cover-up's happening. No one's talking about that anymore. Nobody's talking about that. He saved and screen recorded a FaceTime fingerling session that Rachel Raquel had. She's pleasuring herself. He screen recorded it and saved it to his phone without her consent. But no one talks about it. Like, oh, he's just done enough. Lisa, stop. Lisa, stop. He can be a villain. Why are you protecting him? Because he's on the Tom and the Tom. Doesn't he owe like negative 5% his share in that? Who cares? Life. Oh, I God. Ride right with me. Like, like, I have an assistant. <laughs> you know, I have people that help me. She's not a teenager, but brother. this guy is fucking yeah. on his way to AARP. All right? But the... Rachel's been treated so differently, Julie. And we see that. We definitely see that. I'm not saying coddle Rachel, but hold Tom Sandoval to the same standards we held Rachel. I mean, ugh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate that he's getting praised for showing up for the job he gets paid to do. Stop.
Stop, yeah, sir. You, you stop. want that person helping you. You didn't have it. I would want it. I would way rather have somebody with me in all aspects yeah. than to be alone. Yeah, yeah. Always. Like I, even even like performing. Like I always wanted to be part of a duo. Always. We see how that's kind of codependency too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how he grabbed Tom and he was like, Tom, okay, you gotta be here. He just needs someone next to him because he's not strong enough to stand on his own. He's just not, he's not a strong person. He's not a strong man in that sense. He's a man baby. So then he had to bring Tom on and go, we're the Toms. But then every chance he got, he would put down Schwartz. And then Katie would stick up for Schwartz. Not that she didn't put him down herself. Of course she did. He put her down. They had their whole thing. But Katie actually was the one who actually stuck up for Schwartz when Sandoval was uh, treating him like shit. And then Schwartz did not have Katie's back and always threw his wife under the bus to let Tom Sandy butt, who then gave zero shits about Schwartz when he got into this whole scandal and ruined their brand in a lot of ways. Um, but no, Katie had to suffer because it's the women's fault. Uh, Rhonda V, thank you so much for the super sticker. Oh, God, is this over yet? Yeah, no, no, we're, you're the one that's been, been, even my last been like best friends. Duo. My band before that was like a duo and like we're, we're like together. Duo. Yeah, but I'm not saying don't have friends. No, no I'm not saying that. Yeah. I, I, don't have friends. I'm just saying that feeling of needing uh, the other half and being empty and, um, you know, insecure. What are the words we use? Um, <sighs> that's, you know, being by yourself and figuring out exactly who you are in the world is an important experience. I've had to be very, very vocal about that to people that I'm dating. Mm. Like, what, that you needed to be alone or? No. I'm oh, like, sorry, what did he just say? Why, why is his voice changing? I had to be very vocal about that. To people you're dating? What are you talking about? What is he talking about? Did he say baiting? What are the words we use? Um, that's, you know, being by yourself and figuring out exactly who you are in the world is an important experience. I've had to be very, very vocal about that to people that I'm dating. Mm. Like, what, that you needed to be alone or? No. We haven't seen him be alone yet. He's always pictured with different women. Like, because I'm currently dating, but I'm like, I just. You shouldn't be dating. You should, like, you got to fix that. Whatever that is, fix it. Fix it. Don't hide your dick and stuff. Fix it. I have to warn you that sometimes, like, I am very. Honest. I have to warn you. Sometimes I am an asshole who will cheat on you when your grandmother dies and our mutual dog dies and then gaslight you and lie to you and try to get you kicked off your own show. And replace you with a newer, younger model. I have to be honest with you. Honest and open and a very loving person. Mm. So I like to like. I'm sorry, what? You're what? Uh... Be friends and like, like connect and like whatever. But I have to warn people that like to keep, keep things from getting too attached too quick right now. Right. I know I need to like. Right. Don't fall in love with me, bitches. Okay. I need my freedom. My dick needs to breathe. What is he saying? <laughs> what is he saying? Oh, this is too long. And not get into a serious relationship again. Right. And yet you have trouble with that. And I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm so that's sort of this person up like every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to tell them, I'm like, please go out on dates. Right. So, so they, 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 because of the way you behave and the way you make I them think feel, he's like a secret swinger. Feel, they don't listen to the words you're saying, right? Yeah. Okay. And and so that's, you know, codependency bleeds into this other construct we call love addiction. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which is what you're talking about now. Even though you might not really be truly love addicted, that boundarylessness of getting so in with somebody, even though you don't want to be there, and you're pulling back, you're able to pull yourself out. The other person is too far in, but it's, it's not, not like I'm, and it's not like I'm professing my love or anything. It's, I, just, it's a it's feeling. Like it's a feeling. It's yeah. like just chatting away. It's the feeling. Truly, I, feel like you've been I don't like know. Love lately. Yeah. In spurts. Yeah. But you're like kind of more self-aware now. And yes. yeah. But see, I'm not. I, I'm. I'm not being sort of. I'm not trying Actually, to Actually, Julie, doing. that's a good question. The other and, why they... and I think Julie brings up a good question. I think a lot of people have this. Like, how did Ariane not sus suspect anything? If you've ever been in a situation like this, and I have, the person then they gaslight you to the point where they make you feel crazy. Like, oh, I would never, oh my God, you think that of me? No. Instead of just like, I was in a position in my 20s begging someone to just please tell me. I know something's going on. I feel cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs about it. And just, it's so much easier if you just fucking tell me. And he'd be like, no, my God, you're being jealous. You're doing this. And I was like, but you have that feeling. But then you have this person that you think you love telling you no, no. And then you're like, well, maybe I am fucking crazy. And then society reinforces this crazy girlfriend. We never hear the crazy boyfriend. It's like my crazy ex-girlfriend. It's a whole damn show. So then you think maybe I am being one of those jealous girls. And then you have society conditioning you to like, you want to be the cool girl friend. Okay. He needs his freedom. You can't like hold a man down and you're in your twenties, your thirties, whatever. And you're just thinking, okay, well maybe I am um, maybe I am going kind of crazy. So the person you're supposed to love and trust who you've been in a relationship with, and I was in a, a relationship with this person almost as long as Tom and Ariana, and they're telling me, no, Jolene, nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's wrong. 
Um, I, I would never, I would never. So all those feelings you have, you push down because you think it must be me. Because as women, I think we are kind of uh, born into just taking so much on ourselves, you know, and with the state of the world and uh, the patriarchal rule, it's kind of like, well, I mean, ugh, maybe I am being ridiculous. Maybe I am being hysterical. <laughs> me and my little uterus situation, you know, maybe I am being just a hysterical woman. So there's so many things that are fighting against us, you know, asserting ourselves or using our voice and trusting our gut and our instincts. And also you're in love. So you're like, he wouldn't do that to me. He wouldn't do that. So I think a lot of that was Ariana, you know? Um, so I can relate in that way um, because this man wasn't telling her. He should have told her. He should have said, I'm fucking Rachel. I don't want to be with you. And that's what I said to my ex. I was like, you know, the worst part is you let me believe a lie for so long. You wasted my time. You should have just ripped the bandaid and just fucking left, you know? And I knew that this stuff, you know, it got to a point where, you know, this stuff is probably going on, but, you, but then you just want to go, but he's saying he's not. So how do I justify this? I don't want to uproot my whole life. You know, I think I'm content in this. So it's just, it's really fucked up. It's really fucked up. Um, yeah, we're always blamed for that, Julie. I mean, it's one of those things. I think it's in, in, and we have so much internalized misogyny within ourselves that I think we're, we don't feel comfortable and open enough and comfortable enough to just say, because then you're a crazy bitch and all of these fucking feminists, you know, and uh, we're Karens and we're all these things when really we're just having feelings and emotions. And that's why I think it's great to create like a community of women and men, because again, you know, not all dudes are like fucking Tom Sandoval, but I think the system in general is rigged to make us feel as though we are less than to make us have to doubt ourselves so that we need a man. So we think we have to, to make us competitive with each other over men. So, and then there's, you know, there's the pick me thing where it's like, yeah, yeah, those bitches. Yeah. They're crazy, but I'm not like one of those girls. Why wouldn't you want to be like a woman? You know, but that's what the patriarchy does. It makes you believe that somehow there's this cool group of cool women that men accept and you should get an invitation. I don't fucking want an invitation to that party. I'd rather be invited by the women all day, every day. Okay. And so I can't wait till we get to that point. And that's why I love the goddamn Barbie movie. So good. America Ferreira's uh, speech during that, of the, how hard it is to actually be a woman. And it's okay to admit that. And you're not like a crybaby, crazy psycho bitch for saying that. It is. There are so many crazy standards on us that men don't carry with them. It's insane of how, you know, you have to be strong, but not too strong. You got to be nice, but not too nice. You got to be assertive, but definitely don't be a bitch. Don't be sassy. Don't be bossy. No shit, but you don't want to know more than the men. I mean, it's just... Ah. So I love that you guys come in here. And I love that we can talk about this shit. You don't have to feel bad about feeling this way. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. Team women. Fuck yeah. Fuck Tom Sandoval. Fuck Tom Sandoval forever. I don't care. <laughs> I think it's sort of Fuck dudes like Tom Sandoval forever. I don't care. <laughs> fast too. And by the way, who you're picking, I'm sure is part of the deal. And you're not too. angry for saying that. You're just fucking right. How about we just are right? We're not angry women. We're just motherfucking right. <laughs> picking somebody whether you know it or not that is prone to that kind of thing. Oh, I'm so tired of these penises have, talking all the know, time. Shut up. Seeing some people and they talk about other people that they're kind of dating. Okay, good. That must make you feel better. It makes they, feel so much they may be doing it to try to suck you in further, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? It's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not making me fight. It's I understand, but they may have that intention. Yeah. You think it's like, oh, good, thank God they're dating. No, and they're pulling, thinking, I've, why isn't he jealous? I'm pulling <laughs> it out of them. I've, I've been pulling, them out of them, pulling it out of them so they like understand like that it's okay. Like I want you to do that. Yeah, good. All right. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks, I, guys. The most concerning thing for me for Thanks, you, well, it's this whole area of insecurity and immaturity and whatever these words are that, that you're describing. It's how have you been in uh, reality television? Uh, well, we finished the 11, 12 years. Oh my God. Yeah. So you started when you were in your Yes, variant. Don't vision. waste our time. Yeah, that's, that's a way, when I, <laughs> television sometimes is a way of <laughs> um, <laughs> avoiding growing up. Yeah. Because it's such an unreal world. It's such a, it's not, you know, it's not working on a construction site. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's very different with a very different set of priorities and things. And um, it's very, also hard to figure out who you are and what I, did you do it? Did you have a job? Were you a bartender before this? Yes. Okay. And, and did you work long in the world before? Television? Who cares about oh, yeah. bartending? I, mean, I, first job I, was, I, mean, I worked at a very young age. Okay. And it's always bartending? Or no, no, no. I mean, I've, worked in the, I've worked in the food industry. I feel like a lot of people when they're young, they go either food industry, yeah. industry or like retail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I definitely went to the food industry because of the social aspect of it. And 
um, the pace. So I could hook up with women. Is Applebee's. Okay. All right, because it is. Ooh, you know, two for 20, Applebee's. For anybody in in any kind of entertainment, frankly, but especially television, especially reality television, to have had a job, to yes. have worked in the world. Yes. It's very important. And that's where our show came about, is we were all working at uh, yes. Sir for Lisa Vanderpump. Yeah. Can we get anyone who's going to have on the damn show do a little bit of research on him? So Dr. Drew knows zip, zip, zero, zilch, nada. And somebody told me last time, and I want to check it out, there's a, a, a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Um, who covered this Dr. Drew episode. Please remind me of the name of that um, a gentleman because I'd like to watch that uh, for sure. Yes, now it's entertainment's fault and we know entertainment is a bitch. We know that. <laughs> yes, rant and rave. It is like watching the fucking good old boys club. Like, ugh, stop it. Yeah. And working together, living together, like taking trips together. It was mm. crazy. All dating each other. Like me and Schwartz, we met on Craigslist, but we became really good friends, roommates. And then our friend Jax, who I'd known forever from like modeling back in the day, like, you know, it was like my girlfriend, my two best friends were with, were with my girlfriend and her two best friends, you know? That sounds so How did special <laughs> forces affect you? I was a little, I was obviously aware of the cameras, mm. you know, so I wanted to. He cried while pooping. Say all the right things. No, for the just, piss off just the like. <gasps> Schwartz, Schwartz, just end this relationship. You know, you're done with this guy. Schwartz says, say all the right things and just end this. What did he just say? Schwartz is throwing him under the bus. Cameras, you know, so I wanted to say all the right things. No, just, piss off just the like shut up, kind of. Yeah. Just not talk. And say not all the right things you, like... and further piss off the audience. Schwartz hates this man. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Okay, I'll have to check out the pop scene. Yeah. Aspect. Just keep your head down, do your thing. Mm. Were you, were you, like at every, any given moment, you're hyper aware of how the audience might react to what you say after having the whole country hate you. I'm not subscribing. Quit putting yeah, it up. <laughs> yes. That's inevitable. I just wanted to kind of like, and they want you to talk. I'm like trying to tell these guys about my situation, but it was a very, it was unique. The situation's not unique which is, in a sense, but the, like ugh. how it blew up was pretty mm. unique. I, I it, those guys said, Tom, you're not the victim. Those guys were 100% right. They called your fucking ass out. I watched those episodes of Special Forces. They called him out. And he's like, but my publicist said he never seen anything like it before. Never said anything like it before. My publicist said she never seen anything like it before. So now it's his publicist's fault because she'd never seen anything like it before. And the guys are like, we don't care. We're in the military. We're getting you to own your shit, sir. And he's like, no, it's very different. Like how big it got. Oh, yeah. yeah it's really you know, like how it just was... You're not the first freaking scandal to like shut up. So over the top, CNN talking. What about do you mean? This. Is oh, this always brings up CNN. One time, CNN had a scroll. Big deal. Build a bridge. They have to cover pop culture and entertainment news. Have you not watched CNN in the past ten years? They don't just cover. I mean, it is depressing, and they go from one to the next, and they're like, next up, somebody else is dead, and dead, and you're just like, ah, oh. it's like a constant like fear um, circle they keep you in. You know, it's like a montage of fear, and you can't turn. You're like, but I don't want to miss the next show because Anderson Cooper's going to tell me more about this awful thing. Um, but have you not watched CNN? CNN covers pop culture news and things and entertainment stuff. So you're not you're not an exception to that rule. You're not an exception to that rule at all. I mean, it was stupid. It's the same. It's not, it's like not you guys... stupid. It's not stupid. The fact that you think it's stupid is because you want to downplay it because you don't want to take responsibility. It's not stupid. To go through something different because you're a public figure. This guy. The same thing. Every this guy. Time. It's just same and... points. CNN. Public's never seen anything like it. What's the big deal? It's just a reality star fucking uh, what, someone else cheating. This guy, by you know the and these days there's a whole new layer to it of the virality. Thank you, Jada. They cover before. entertainment news. And virality when it's going. You know what feels news? Uh, it really feels like you could get corporations do is they cover things that make money. Okay, entertainment news makes money, so they're going to get into that for the money, Tom. We know you're a bad businessman and you owe your mom a quarter of a million dollars. We get that, but I mean, geez, just blatant lies. He's saying these is not these are non truths, Tom destroyed it's a mob mm. it's a mob action oh really like stop was... with the mob if you do something that is found to be universally awful and then you also react in a way that people find universally awful they're all gonna be like yeah yeah that's shitty again that's tom no i didn't wake up in march 2023 and go god i hope there's something that comes up about tom shandable today so i can just hate on this bastard no I actually followed the story like the rest of us. And I was like, holy shit, I've been watching the show for 10 years. And he did what and a who and a how. And then his behavior after the fact made it a million times worse. A million times worse for him. He made his own bed and his behavior after the fact created this. When are you going to accept that? He has not changed. He's done no work. 
Every time we see a new little narrative spun by him about he's the victim, mob mentality, don't feed the mob. Well, then don't go to BravoCon and get paid to be there anymore. Because I heard a lot of commentary on that. How could these people ask rude questions? It's not rude questions. They're fans of the show. It's like a sporting team. Sports teams. Yeah, clearly I'm big on the sports. A sporting team. <laughs> it's like watching sports. You know, when I go to hockey games, which is the one sport I do really like, people cheer and people boo. And that's part of the fucking game. And when you're on the team that people don't like, they might boo. They might do that. They might go, oh, they get mad at the refs. It's the same fucking thing. But it's okay in sports. Isn't that funny how it's okay in sports? But when it happens in something that uh, majority women watch, and I'm not discounting all the men that watch Bravo, but the, the, the big audience for this network is women. Then it's like, oh, it's so petty and stupid and these women and oh my God, get over it. But when it's a sporting event, they're like, no, they're really invested in their team. Well, maybe we were invested in that team and you fucked that team up. So now we don't like you. We could have been at the goddamn Super Bowl and you stopped us from getting there because you couldn't make that field goal, sir. So now we're going to remember you forever and ever as Gary Anderson. Um <laughs> Which is a, such a random reference, but it was a Minnesota kicker. Uh, maybe if Brooks in the chat, I think she'll know who I'm talking about. But he is notoriously known in Minnesota, poor guy, um, for missing a very important kick in Vikings football history. And I don't even really like foosball, but I'm a Minnesotan true and true, even though I live in California. And my husband's a Vikings fan and my dad's a Vikings fan and my brother's a Vikings fan. And so you never forget good old Gary Anderson. And he fucked up. <laughs> but not on purpose, like Tom Sandy, but... <laughs> Thank you, Jill Christine. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Love you, Jillian. Great podcast. Thank you. See, my husband's here. My husband says, yes, I'm here for the Vikings references. Anytime my husband, his office is out there. And so he will hear me, I think, screaming about the Vikings. <laughs> and this is then he tunes in. Brooke, thank you. Yes, I knew Brooke would know. Brooke, yeah, you got one job, Gary Anderson. And forever, his name will be synonymous with this epic, unfortunate failure within sports. But no one's like, you guys are bullying Gary Anderson. It's just part of the fucking deal. We're not going to Gary Anderson's house and egging it and whatever. It's just when that's brought up, you're like, ah, fucking Gary Anderson. This is how it works. It's sports, entertainment. It's all the same. It's synonymous. I just don't get people that don't understand that. It's it's that was one cuckoo. triple homicide. Yeah, I had that feeling. Yeah, I, I've been I've been the object of a, of a viral thing a couple times, and it really my I husband felt, I felt the, scared for my family. The facts. And people get threatening. They threaten you all over the place. Yeah, and so you start to believe you. Start oh to no, not the evil people who threaten you again. It's not right that people get threatened, but hell, I just got a text message the other day. I don't even know who sent it. And they said some of the most vile things to me. And you know what I did? Block, hide, because they're cowards and they hide behind them. If they would have maybe, you know, text from a number that was actually them. But this person clearly is like watching my life and trying to uh, <laughs> hurt my feelings. But my husband and I now have a joke about it because it was pretty funny. Um, uh, but I, I mean, this shit, unfortunately it happens, but this doesn't, this, then that doesn't give me the right to go out into the world and be a dickhead. Cause somebody wants to have my phone number and text me mean things from a WhatsApp number or whatever. Uh, that doesn't give me the right to go out into the world and hurt other people. That doesn't give me a pass. And that's what Tom doesn't understand. People are going to be dicks. I've had so many people be dicks to me since I started comedy and especially since I came on YouTube. And unfortunately you know, it is part of the process. It sucks in a lot of ways, but uh, the, it's the minority of people who do it. It's a small amount of people who actually do that. And I think he's confusing getting like a bullied or threatened with people just wanting him to be accountable for his actions, in it's my opinion. Matters. You never know what's real, what's not. And it, it's Thanks, Anna. raining down on you. You know, it's just very unpleasant. It, it's, it's not real. But it feels like, <laughs> like, uh, you know, but like I feel like the audience. Well, so, first of all, Thank we have you, a great Robert. relationship with them. 12, 11 years, and they've let us in their living room. Yeah. We kind of almost have the parasocial relationship. Well, you do. But then he became for a lot of people who have been fucked over or hurt. He be, like they kind of purged on you. Well, but you became like the you're, uh, you're putting your finger on the thing, the phenomenon. No, that's not true. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Yes, it's triggering to people, obviously, people who have been through that. But I think his reaction to it and just how sick and twisted and how he tried to spin it on Ariana, on Ariana, that's when we all were like, rise up, bitches. Hell no, you ain't doing this, Tom. We've seen this movie before. What, you think we get triggered by every cheater? You think every, you know how many shows I watch where people cheat? This doesn't trigger me one bit. But the way you handled it, sir. The way you didn't want to take accountability and how shitty you were as a person, that made us go, wait a minute, this is different. This isn't just a random like cheating thing. This is cheating with 
atrocious behavior attached to it after the fact. And there were so many layers to this. So again, to just dumb it down is just a bunch of dumb bitches who were cheated on. And it happens. I hear this. Like I hear this on YouTube and shit. People say, men cheat. Get over it. Men. That is what keeps men able. That's what keeps problematic men able to continue to be problematic is when you are so passive about it and you go, it fucking happens. That's men. How that's how men are. No demand that they evolve and be better. Anybody in that situation. Don't just go, yeah, men, because I never hear that about women cheaters. You never say, yeah, that's just women. They just got to get their vagina filled. You know, they're just cheaters. You never hear that. It's always this, guys. It's guys, guys. They're just guys, guys. Phenomenon that is so common today. So mobs are dangerous, oh, right? Shut up, Dr. Drew. I'm so over you. Yeah. We haven't had mobs <laughs> since French Revolution or something. You know, it's like that. He that's doesn't that's know about the damn French Revolution. He knows about French fries and he don't eat them because he's trying to keep a six pack. That's what mobs are capable of, or Russian revolution. I mean, moms oh tear people apart. They do horrible things. People lose. Please stop. Please stop. This is so stupid. Mobs. How are you going to jump to the French Revolution from Tom Sandoval is someone who is incapable of being accountable and wants to blame women? Seeing and to the French that, Revolution. <laughs> Thank God. But to your point, what they do, what that mechanism Thank you, Adam. The lack of accountability. It's a scapegoating mechanism. And it's actually everybody else's narcissism. Rather Nobody's scapegoat. He's an asshole. He's an asshole who keeps being an asshole. How are we scapegoating that? If he was like a nice guy who was like, oh, I fucked up. I feel so bad. I'm going to work on myself. You know, it's no one's fault but mine. It's just like, oh, these women didn't deserve that. And clearly something's going on with me. I need to fucking fix that. And I'll be back when that's fixed. No one would have this reaction. But he's like, it's their, her fault and that bitch over there's fault. And one time this bitch looked at me funny, her fault. So stop it. Scapegoating. Dr. Drew, it's, he should get his like license Rather taken away. Rather than turning narcissistic rage at each other, <laughs> they gather and they turn it all on one. And it feels like satisfying. And it's Thank a, you, it's a blood bloodlust. It's a bloodthirst. Yeah, and then all the cancellation it. stuff, I and mean, they intend to hurt people. And then they do. There is a bloodlust. Stop it. Are these people kidding me? There's a bloodlust. You stop. You stop. This is how you sleep at night on your bloodlust pillow. Nobody's bloodlusting you. We want you to shut the fuck up. Go away. We want you to be accountable. If you're going to stay, be accountable. Just like that guy said at BravoCon. Why are you here? That was a perfectly good question. And they wouldn't even let him answer. Lisa had to chime in. Tom Schwartz had to chime in. Lala chimed in. But why are you here, Tom? Just to hurt more people? Like, why are you here? It's crazy to me. Freaking, oh, my mom just texted me. She landed. Yeah. Now, now, they don't actually act out violently. They act out by people losing their jobs, people losing their career. Oh, yeah. people losing I their remember patients. we were doing our book tour. Yes, Barb. And so they made some comments like a decade prior yeah. that were, you know, so they had some couple of, like racist comments. I got. Wait, who? What's he talking Now he's going to bring racism into this? Oh, my God. Yeah. The privilege. Yeah, bloodlust. Yeah. No, no, bloodlust. I can't get over that. I can't, I'm going to rename the show Bloodlust. That's going to be my, this is the bloodlust breakdown with Jolene. That's me. Don't actually act out violently. They act out by people losing their jobs, people losing their career. Oh, yeah. people losing I their asked you to even lose your job. We asked you to like fix your fucking self. Oh my God. I remember we were doing our book tour and somebody had made some comments like a decade prior yeah. that were, you know, so they had some couple like racist comments, I guess. And I went. Racist comments, I guess. To, when we were talking to the book tour. They were like, I'm not going to say the name, but like, they were like, these girls were smiling. They're like, has so-and-so been fired yet? They love it. Are they talking about Stasi? Because a lot, I don't know if you realize, Tom, what you're speaking on right now as a white man, but if you're speaking on uh, actual uh, Stasi and Stasi's racism, um, it's not on you as a white dude to forgive her and to be like, time's up, people of color, you better forgive her. Some people are going to feel very, very hurt by that. And again, a simple study of American history will bring you to your answer of why people would want someone like that not to be on a show they enjoy. How fucking hard is that? That's not bloodlust. That's years, generations of trauma that formed this country. How is this? I just, bleh, bleh, bleh. They love it. Yeah, they love They were like smiling. Yes. Who cares? It's a job. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? She can find another one. And she did. And she did. And she still goes on to her. So is cancel culture a real thing? It's not. Because she still makes lots of money. Did she have a little consequence? She had a little consequence for her action. Sure she did. Sure she did. But that shit hurt a lot of people. Tom, there's nothing wrong with having consequences to bad actions. Look at him. He's like, see, you hated Stasi. You screamed in her face. 
Now you're using her as an example. Oh my God, performative, performative. Bo, sorry, Tilly. Oh, the baby kitty. She's like, mom. Bo, tomato, tomato, tomato. Bo, 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 tomato, tomato, tomato. Now it's racism's fault. It's racism's fault. Yes. He's trying to tie Stassi into it. Stassi had her own thing. Leave her out of it. Now let's blame all the women. Well, if they were here, they would say it's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture. But well, the thing oh. is, it goes too far. Are you listening to me, Schwartz? It is consequence culture. It doesn't go too far because you still have a job. You all still have a job. You have multiple jobs. You have more jobs than you ever had in your life. The only problem is you don't know how to manage your gosh darn money. So despite Tom Scandival being on three television shows, Mass Singer, Armed Forces or Special Forces, whatever, and Vanderpump Rules, along with having a podcast, you still can't pay your mom back. That's a you problem, Tom. Not a cancel culture problem. I agree with you. It is extremely destructive. It is humans. At this is where Dr. Drew, he lost me a long time ago when he started. Whenever he talks about this kind of stuff, I'm like, nope. They're worse. It, it's, it's one thing to call out people and to go, hey, hey. You know, yeah. like, like it's kind of what people are doing. No one's like, fire Tom Sandoval. Are we on a petition or something? No, we're not. Right, Tilly? Oh, babies. I was, I was at a, I was at a, uh, Big function, a lot of people in the room, and somebody used the word tranny. And this guy behind me he got like, oh, he was like 20 years old, oh, oh, oh my god. And, he's, and the, the person ended up like a comedy set, I think he's like, Boo, you're the transphobe, blah, blah. And I thought, my friend, if you're actually upset about what that guy said, mm -hmm. which I didn't like what he said, you yeah. should go up and tell him and go, hey, dude, I, it didn't strike my ear right. I mean, maybe you're not aware because he really clearly wasn't aware of what he had said. He yeah, was, he was an older person, he had no idea. And so, that's that's not that word is not okay anymore. Can, I, can, can we change that? Are you okay? As opposed to, yeah, which doesn't change anything. It doesn't help anybody. That person didn't learn anything. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of us are just unhappy and upset. We already didn't like the word. You know, it's just, it's just the opposite of actually caring. Yeah. This is grandiose caring. This is me. I'm caring. That's wow. narcissism. Wow. Doing social forces. Hearing she people is. like Ryan Austin Green, who literally was, you know, the mogul for three years, couldn't speak. You know, he, he it was like he had a stroke. Mm -hmm. Had to learn how to walk again. Um, Vody Miller lost his, you know, daughter. <laughs> yes. You know, other people. Jack. Osborne, you know. Yeah, so it just goes like to show in that show, your trauma was zip, zilch, zero, nada. When you look at special forces and the trauma that people went through, variant says Tom has negative 0 0.00000000001 of Native American blood, and he is oppressed by all women of all time. Yes, because he's got dick juice in him, okay? And he's oppressed because of his dick. And with MS, these, these things that people have gone through, it really... Things in are you coveting their trauma? Are you taking that on for yourself, Tom? Perspective. Yes. And, and you're like, the hell am I complaining for? Yeah, what are you complaining for? You big baby. You went on a show and you got paid. You've been paid more than you ever have in your life for being a lying, cheating scumbag with no accountability. Like these guys have gone through. I mean, yes, it's my own and it's me. So it's more effective. But it just, it helps to hear. Yes. It helps to hear that people lost their children and couldn't walk for three years. That helps you, Tom? That everybody has got their personal struggles. Their, their... We're all just human beings. I want to walk that one back. We're all doing our best. We all, we all, very few people are. Dr. Drew, not everyone's doing their best. Not everyone's doing their best. And if you did any research into this man, you'd see he's definitely not doing his best. Bad. Yeah. So this is the same. This whole notion of good and bad. That's they're all bad. They're all good. It's kind of what I think. <laughs> primitive thinking. Most people are sort of, they can do some bad things in certain situations, but they're mostly. Like Tom. They intend to be good. They just are weak. They have <laughs> weaknesses. They're cowards. How can they even intend to be good when no one even holds them accountable? And they never have to fix themselves. Yes, they have whatever. And, and they do things that they wish they hadn't done. It got me to also realize that, hey, like, have I been like that sometimes in the past? Mainly to myself. I don't go mm -hmm. online and do stuff or whatever. Like, it's yeah, right. not normally my thing. I never really. But I'm like, you need to check yourself when you feel like you start getting there where you're like angry. And you should like, check yourself now and unplug this goddamn podcast because it's horrible. Like, yeah, dude, for sure. I, and by the way, I noticed uh, Bodhi. I, I found it unappealing when you kept beating yourself up. I didn't like that. It's like we are, we immediately have to go. If a man is hurting, a problematic man is hurting, we must stop him from, I don't like you beating yourself up. When did he ever beat himself up? Everything he's ever done has been like to get more sympathy. This person hurt me. The mob mentality. Someone hit me up in the DMs and they said, Tom, you're a jerk and I hate you. Oh, how could they? I didn't like it. I don't know if other people liked it. I didn't like it. <sighs> I, know, I don't know. I didn't like it too much. Stop it. <laughs> That's my <laughs> advice to you. Stop beating yourself up. It, it's, it's. There's other ways to atone. You know, if you need to make an amends, figure out what that is to clean up your side. Maybe apologize to Ariana. Do some work on yourself so you don't do this to other women. And for gosh sakes, shut the fuck up with this victim tour. The special forces guy. We he, They should have the special forces guys on. The special forces guys were telling him straight up. You're not a victim, Tom. You did this. You did this. You did this. The same way Ariana told him. Time after time. Ariana told him, Tom, this didn't happen. Nothing happened. 
you did this, Tom. You did it. You're a worm with a mustache. You did it. But Tom is a perpetual victim. He is a forever victim. Nothing happened. You did it. Exactly, Ariana. Nothing happened. You did it. First side of the street and just do it. Don't beat yourself up. But I noticed that the way Bodhi looked at you, I don't know where your relationship goes with him, but I was like, oh my God, he really. Who the fuck is Bodhi? Is, he feels your pain. Did you, did you know that about him? Yeah. Whoa. I was like, oh, Bodhi, whoa, he just was so upset watching you upset. Yeah. Did you had... Who's Bodhi? Am I dumb? Who's Bodhi? Who's Bodhi? Who is Bodhi? Who's Bodhi? Do you, you guys have a close thing that I, I like? Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah, I thought I saw that last night. When you look, night. like, I Who? guess I can't talk too much about it. Yeah, you can't, you can't really divulge, but I, I see, yeah, I saw that. Like I, a, I looked up to him so much. He became, well, he's clearly the spiritual center of that group. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it, we, our group was very different than your group. Oh, um, is Bodhi on Special Forces? Because I watched the damn show. Now I gotta look it up. Okay. Special Forces Bodhi. Bodhi. Oh, he's one of the guys. Oh, is he? He's... Huh? Okay, so he's one of the dudes? I'm confused. I'm, I'm confused. But, oh yeah, he's one of the... No, that's Jason Foxy. Who's Bodhi? Is that Bodhi? I don't even know. Who, I don't, who's he talking about now? Who is he talking about? <laughs> My husband said Bodhi is his body. <laughs> His body was upset from the shame he was holding in. <laughs> I love my husband. He's iconic. I love him. Um, we didn't have that kind of um, tenderness and stuff. We were we were much. Oh, happier, must be one funnier, of the special forces guys. We social, life. social. No, we weren't light. We got we got in deep with each other, but but it felt more. Um, I don't know. It, there was not that kind of tenderness that you guys had. You guys had a real tenderness together. We couldn't one develop. The they, they beat the shit out of us. They never stopped. And so developing, you know, like like sitting Ooh, in the, the thing. I just saw dog. Cody's look at you. I don't think we ever had enough time to develop that kind of thing. We were just constantly being beat up. We were too a lot. Oh, y'all yeah. stank we, we face him up, Rhonda. We were going. Yes, that would happen. Yes. So that was so. where we would develop the, those, like, because we taking Well, also, see, what we had, we had another thing that you guys didn't have. We were put in quarantine oh, for a week because of COVID before oh, we went out to the camp. Shit. But hold on. There were seven of us at this one hotel, and we were told, stay in your room. Okay, who okay. cares? <laughs> for me, as I start dating again. Oh, don't. You know. Don't date again. Mm -mm. I'll give him I stank kind of feel face like all day. alone. And it's kind of what you're doing. Thank you. Make an effort not to get involved. I, I don't mind. Dating is fine. Like really make an effort to pay attention yeah. to who you are and he what you beat want. Beat his meat. Other people are. The only time he beat himself up was when he really beats his own meat. Kind of assess people and how you feel about yeah. them. And try to be fully present with that. And have more, um, I, I don't know quite what's going on with all the, the sexual stuff. It, it feels like when I think about those early things you were talking about, the dance club and stuff. Demented. What, it, what the, in the feeling I have is that you sometimes perceive women as sexually devouring. And when men feel devoured, they go, oh, we shrink, we shrink. Uh, is that accurate or is huh? that? There not... have been times where I felt that way. Okay, don't let that happen. That's it's not, not real. anymore. It's not real. It's but not... I think your ex-girlfriend got you to there again. <laughs> got yeah. you in some sort of... Dr. Drew, are you enabling this man to then blame Ariana too? I think your ex-girlfriend got you there. Tom got himself there. Tom's boner and his fucked up vision of women and his trauma that he never processed. So he dumps it on everybody else and his possible narcissism, despite what you say, got him there. We're blaming Ariana for the like, shut up. I can't with these dudes. This is horrible. This is a circle jerk of nonsense. A circle jerk of nonsense. Yeah, but she got you into that, whatever that zone is. You got to examine. She got you. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Someone called Dr. Drew's wife to pick him up and take him home. You're going to timeout, sir. And that more carefully. And don't be afraid to talk to women about that and your feelings about it. You got to bring it into the room see what people say what are you talking about you guys are like so weird reacting and how you feel about it you know, i feel but... like i've got my mojo back in that aspect oh not the mojo no one cares about your mojo your mojos would fucked all this up in the first place <laughs> but, you, but a lot of the stuff you, you gloss over things you know what i mean you, you like okay i'm done with that now I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> it's like you got you're gonna you're gonna have to like because your boundaries aren't great yeah. you're gonna have to build them you have to you know, keep like working on them working them out all the time i haven't and spent a lot of time alone i gotta i gotta admit some time alone and even when you're with somebody and even when you're, well, you've said that, you've been very clear about it. I would need that other person, even if I'm, you know, I always have to be that person. He uses women. He uses women to get what he wants out of them. He uses women to make him feel better. He uses women as a tool. He did that with Rachel Raquel. He was feeling old, irrelevant, not appreciated. So he gets himself a younger, newer model who's not as smart, according to him. Okay. So she, she gave me my mojo back. Okay. You use women as a tool. You use Ariana, it looks like for years to, for your own like ability. Okay. And also for your own financial gain, because you were a partnership, the sisterhood of the traveling, you know, mixology books that she mostly worked on allegedly. 
So you're just treating women not as your equal, not as your partner, but as tools to make you feel better, stroke your ego and stroke your uh, man parts and your your little boner that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, according to you. That's not good. I mean, it's, it's great because you're quite capable of that, but it's also not good because you need to develop some stuff around you that's yours. And even when you're dating, still approach it that way, right? Not that I'm going to go in or this He's got too much stuff that's his, like the band, that dick flute that they broke. Because so that, that them going in too far is another devouring thing, right? Yeah. They go in too far and they pull me and they devour me. You know, and that, mm. I, I think the devouring is both. That has everything to do with Tom. Tom's yeah. idea that a woman is devouring him. Tom thinking that a woman is devouring him is him, not them. That's his perception. This, Dr. Drew, what is oh scary my God. and gratifying for you both? Oh my God. Yeah. I think it's a, I feel like right now, I feel like I have a governor on my love. Or like, I, I'm not, not that I'm not vulnerable, mm -hmm. but I just haven't recently gotten divorced. It's mm -hmm. not, I don't, it was very healthy and amicable. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like you have an internal ceiling on the, like, I, I Short, stop it. It was not healthy and amicable. Katie can barely look at you. You looked like a couch. She, Katie just got done saying at BravoCon that, no, the only relationship you have is the exchange of the dogs. But no, you're not in a good place. These men, these men, these men, these baby men. You're not, in, it wasn't healthy and amicable. You tried to embarrass her and you were part of this whole uh, charade to try to get everyone to look at Katie and, you know, she's the villain. Ariana's the villain. And then bring in now Joe, the hairdresser, who's not a crackhead, according to her, and uh, freaking Rachel Raquel to take their place. I'm not willing to fully fall in this love is that, right this now. Is that boundary thing. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. Not, I'm, I can. And I, I, I'm a romantic for life. I always will. Yeah. Be. No. no, I just cannot. No. No. All head over heels in no. love right now. I, 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 I either. I'm not no. like, be careful. No. I have basically the same thing. Yeah. Like, I, if I find myself, I'm like, okay, I need to like take a couple days, a few days break from this person. Yeah. That's helpful. <laughs> is that, is that it, it, no, no, it's very healthy. Yeah, really I'm, healthy and yeah, amicable, I mean, NYZ girl. When you say a few days, it makes me think, well, you must have spent a few days with. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, yeah, me. when Katie asked you, please leave me alone, move away, when you grab off her plate and you act like a douche and you don't respect her boundaries, then you go off and make out with Rachel Raquel, all the while knowing that Tom Sandy Bud is fucking her. Mm. Very healthy, very amicable. Then All the while taking everyone else's side, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, saying gotta, Katie's a monster and it's her fault. But I'm also, but I'm very, I'm very transparent. I'm very they don't hear your words. They, they hear your. Wait for this next season to just un, unabashedly just cheer for Katie and Ariana. Everything they do, I'm gonna say, is the greatest thing that they ever fucking has ever been done. These women deserve justice. <laughs> After dealing with these man babies for so long, for your behavior, your action, your action. <laughs> oh, and so man. you have to understand oh. what another person is experiencing. And you're, and you're because you're a co, you'll be able to feel it. You'll know. You just got to be honest, honest with yourself about it. So I might be a co light. <sighs> the fact that the way you just talked about needing a, a limit okay. on love and stuff. Are you not, kidding like, me? Like so, you are you know, so codependent, Schwartz. You're not a co light. You're a co co codependent. It's in the come on. Have, been, have there been times where you you know have had to make a personal not decision. at all amy you, that are a big personal decision that you maybe would have made differently if you hadn't been in the public eye um never when it comes to patient care never when it comes to my family out in the world i i just have a just sort of a kantian rule Kant's first law <laughs> is, you know, operate as though your behavior could be used as a universal principle in other words behave as though cameras going all the time yeah i, I try to live like that then when i end up on the camera sometimes i will say things thank you royal i know to be true and I can stand by them. Okay, I'm, I'm like kind of done with these guys. You guys are leaving fucking top-notch comments here. Mtronic says, uh, they are the same. Schwartz is just more co covert. Yep. Or they used uh, to be equally covert. Yeah, Schwartz is more like, yeah, guys. I'm just because then everyone goes, well, Schwartz, he's such a nice guy. He's such a nice guy. No, he's like, oh, sharks guy. I Did I? But he can say the most biting, mean things. And he knew how to get at Katie. And he did that for a very long time. And he got away with it because Katie got the edit of being like the evil mean girl and no one on the show is perfect we don't want to watch people who uh are perfect we want to watch imperfect beings because we are all imperfect beings i get that but katie was the villain and everyone's like fuck katie she's a bitch you know audience saying that kind of stuff um and schwartz he just fed into that and when his wife was there standing for him and trying to protect him against you know the emotionally abusive best friend he let the best friend emotionally abuse his wife so stop it. Royal Brief says you are officially not a romantic when you watch your BFF. Yes, emotionally abuse your wife in public and you defend him, capital H-I-M. Uh-huh. 
Yes, 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 yes. They can't stand it. Tom brought up on special forces. Their merch made $250,000 the first week. That's what you're worried about in this whole scandal. You are bothered that these women made money. You're bothered by that, sir. That should be the least of your worries. They deserve that at least. I mean, that's what he brought up. That's what means something to him. Tom Sandoval is full LA. All the bad things you've ever thought of LA is jam packed in this narcissistic douche baby. Okay. The publicist, they made money on merch. Who cares about merch? You need to be, you're supposed to be fixing yourself, being accountable, but you're more worried about them making money. No one's going to buy your Tom Tom shit. I'm so sorry. No one's going to buy it. It's not that cute. Okay. No one wants to be affiliated with Tom Tom anymore. You fucked it up. You screwed it I over. Them sometimes in a little ways that I wish I had. Okay. But I don't like hubris is a good idea. I don't want to be hubris. Are there any? I'm curious because I know obviously you've been you know did the uh, ask a physician right? Yeah. And then you did the uh, oh different shows and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Were there, were there was there like a moment during mm -hmm. doing those shows back then where you really learned a valuable lesson? Gosh, constantly. Some, yeah. 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 Was there ask that, like, like kindergarten curious. level questions. This is like. So sad. Well, he was, he, he had a different, he would be upset if that was, if he heard this analogy. Sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> or like Corolla would like back in the day, you know, you, you guys, play, you guys played off each other. He still does. No, you still have it. I know. But like, I remember like, like sometimes you'd be talking deliberately and professionally about like, yeah. um, you know, proper, uh, ins you proper insertion it. of anal beads. And then Corolla would be like, Hey, you know, it'd be hilarious if you pull the anal beads out and you had a lampshade at the end or some yeah. shit like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he was, he, he had a different, he would be. Do you understand the role of their show? The role was Adam Corolla was the comedy and Dr. Drew was the straight man. So they were adding this, this was for entertainment purposes. Okay. So you would get your educational sex stuff. And then you'd also get the entertainment of having Adam Carolla, the comedian. I, uh, what is this? These guys, my God. Be upset if that was, if you heard this analogy. Sorry. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, that was, I don't know. I remember. I know what you mean. Um, no, but uh, it, yeah, I mean, he had, we had different jobs to do. Of course. And it worked. So it was, every, yeah. yeah, it was a hit. Um, but yeah. that, that kind of thing where, where I, I don't like anything's wrong. I don't like it. And if it's something that could affect somebody or make them feel bad. I mean, I think, again, whenever I'm not thinking about how another person feels, that's how you get in trouble. Mm. You know, you, you have to always imagine. He said, whenever I'm not thinking about how another person feels, that's when you get in trouble. Tom's like, mm, I don't think I'm going to ever do that. I'm not going to think about how other people feel. Mm. Just me. Just me. Women have ruined me. Imagine how the things you're saying is impacting other people. That, that's a million little lessons yeah. to get good at that. You know, wow, that's because that's, sometimes you how just, does that not put you in your head? Well, so, I mean, you I mean how does that not put you in your head? You can't honestly like multitask your thoughts and feelings of, hey, I wonder how this is going to hurt someone. I wonder if my actions right now are going to hurt someone I care about who doesn't deserve to be hurt. Kind of used to it, but sometimes you just, I would forge forward with information and it would like, it would strike the other person. Such way devastating. Like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I, oh, geez. Oh my God. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. no, no, no. I think I'm hyper paranoid of that. Maybe it's a Minnesota nice thing, but I'm hype. Maybe don't bring Minnesota. Don't bring us into this Schwartz. Don't you bring us into this. That's your own fear of not being liked. It's your own fear. So you never have to, you know, uh, you can just play that. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. No, that has nothing to do with Minnesota nice because Minnesota nice is actually, it's a play on words over there. It's actually, Actually, Minnesota nasty because it's known for passive aggressive and we're very good at that. And uh, so it has nothing to do with the fact that you're so nice. Minnesota nice is actually just kind of like an inside joke and you should know that. Um, I mean, obviously there is that like, hello neighbor aspect to it, but there's also the hello neighbor. I'm going to go hide in my house. And if someone comes to your door, you're like, ah, you know, social interaction. So no, it's not because you're Minnesota nice. Okay. If anything, I'm Minnesota nice. Maybe, maybe borderline detrimental sometimes to what you're afraid to speak. Oh, so Schwartz is so nice. It's detrimental to him how nice he is. How can well, these people so say this with a straight face? How can they say this with a straight fucking face? I'm very, I, I don't want to pump myself up here, but I'm very, very, very considerate of other people's feelings. Um, I don't know. The one person you're supposed to be the most considerate to is your own wife. And we saw you shit on her time after time, time and time again. Time and time again, like the Counting Crow song. We saw you shit on her time and time again, and you had no problem with it. So I would argue, yeah, no, mm -mm, no. Feelings, yeah, they may react or respond to what mm, else. You didn't care about Katie's feelings. You didn't care about Katie's feelings whatsoever. No. Saying, um, which isn't always best for reality TV, but alcohol. Mm. Wow, um, yeah. wow, wow. These men, wow. They have no, they, they have, they have, they cannot look at themselves. There's no self-reflection going on. It's just no self-deprecation, none. I am just so nice. And I'm always thinking of people's feelings, which can uh, be detrimental to me. Yeah.
Poor me. Yeah, they'll give her that. And, <laughs> and sometimes and, he just like hits his limit. You were so nice that you were out there uh, being a kissing slut in your marriage and saying awful things about your wife and letting this man with the crazy eyes over here uh, talk shit about your wife. That's how nice you were. While she was still defending you against this man who was clearly putting you down on the regular. And then he just like lets it let it rip. Well, we don't have to talk about me. <laughs> you brought yourself up. This is what this is classic Schwartz. Well, you know, about me. Da, da, da. Oh, you don't got to talk about me. Oh, shucks. Oh, I'm just going to go back hiding. You brought yourself up. Dr. Drew didn't ask you. Yeah. What, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> What's going on right here? Um, What's going on, Tom? What did you see? Um, well, oh, no, he's just, oh, he's, he's, always, he's always a big advocate for uh, mental health and, and, you know, being proactive about therapy. How can you be an advocate for mental health when he doesn't do it himself? I love that. See, I'm always, I'm, I'm always, I don't think I'm above it, but I'm like, my therapy is snowboarding. My Sir, that's what people who desperately need therapy make excuses. My therapy is being outside because the trees will heal my mental illness. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. Everyone should go to therapy, especially you guys. Especially you guys. And everyone should have mental health and access to mental health. Reasonable, reasonably priced mental health. Supporting my dogs, maybe the occasional beer or um, vacationing. The occasional beer, sir. We've seen you uh, shot feist and disappeared in Mexico. You almost became a missing persons on the Nancy Grace show with that drinking of yours. But okay. Traveling, you know, like going exploring new culture. New I food. mean, that's all great. That is not therapy, but it's, it's something to make you feel better. You know, sometimes. I've done it in the past. Yeah. And I, I enjoyed it, but um, therapy is rewiring your brain a little yeah. bit. So getting things, you know, setting up a different sense of yourself and other people. And it's, it's a very different thing. I think if it's you, too guarded to do therapy. No. They're just going to continue to just shit on everyone because they're not working through their own stuff. And they're using other people as tools for their mental health. What? I'm not guarded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so not guarded. <laughs> um, Wait, can okay. you talk about his feelings? Oh, I, I, I think sometimes he has a hard time talking. Like he can be. Your boyfriend says you're guarded, sir. Have a, I can say no. I can be like, no, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Like, yeah. Not in, not in, not stoic in a good way, but mm. it's overly stoic. Yeah, it's like okay. a pre. Yes, please. Again, do you know the definition of stoic? Because I would not describe you as stoic. Talk about yeah. By the way, I think I just saw you do Ryan Holiday's podcast. Did you do Ryan Holiday's podcast? Many times. R I, Ryan. Look at how he just diverts. Oh, yeah. Ryan Holiday. Ryan Holiday. Did you just do Ryan Holiday's podcast? I, I am, am sort of responsible. Are we getting into me and uh, breaking down a wall of me and my emotions and if I'm guarded? Well, what about Ryan Holiday's podcast? Nice well, deflection. A, you should. Yeah. He he was a college kid, and I was giving this presentation to a bunch of college newspaper people, with a journalist or something. And at the end of this little presentation, newspaper about people. condoms, actually, I think, as I remember. You... It's journalism. That's what I went to college for. Sir, we don't call ourselves newspaper people. <laughs> Years ago, this kid comes up to me and goes, hey, what, are you, what are you reading these days? And I go, what am I reading? I go, dude, I, and the dude was Ryan Holiday. And he must have been 20 or something at the time. And I said, I, I read, I'm an eclectic reader. I, I, he goes, I just want to know what you read. I go, well. I'm reading this work called The Incoridium by Epictetus. He's a stoic philosopher. Yeah. He goes, okay, I'm going to read it. And I go, okay, man, it's it's not light lifting. And that started his stoic journey. That's so cool. Isn't that crazy? His memory, oh. his, I'm always blown away by his ability to just pull up random quotes. Yeah, he just knows. He and, knows. Well, um, particularly his oh, yes. Random quotes. It's really, he lives by that. I, I like that just like the signs at Coles. Live, laugh, be honest with yourself, Schwartz. You got issues. Oh, the, the, the daily yeah, stoic, meditation, digestible. Yeah. yeah, that's my therapy. I like the yeah. creature. You can't decide your own therapy. You too far gone. Novels. <laughs> Those are <laughs> awesome too. No, it's it's a you know people argue. He like, what do you say? Like Jack Reacher? I didn't Jack Reacher around. What's he talking about? Or so it's, it's a Thank you, Rhonda. Like, stoned, stoned. Sure. But it's certainly stoic. a series of no. You just stoned. You just stoned. <sighs> almost aphorisms. It's almost living. over, guys. Yeah. And you know that's what philosophy is supposed to do: help you lead a good life. So in that sense, it is a philosophy. Yeah. See, I don't, yeah. I, I I tend I've, I've read a lot throughout my life, mm -hmm. and I've I've learned a lot. I went to college, but uh, I'm like I was thinking. Mm -hmm. The other day, man, I retained so little, and, and I didn't put a lot of that knowledge into action. Mm -hmm. Is it a waste? What about your EQ, your emotional intelligence? We got to work on that, gentlemen. Time, no. But the people I met along the way. Were Doesn't matter that. how many quotes you can recite. If your emotional intelligence is zero or in the negatives, you should focus on that. FSU, Florida State University. Uh, um, no, and I made great friends there, and I wouldn't change anything. That is quite from Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's like, so I didn't know what else to do growing up. I, I was like, you know, I was I graduated high school, and I was like, my God. I mean, secretly, I knew what I wanted to do. What? I, I wanted what to be an actor, but I was like ashamed of it. Oh, yeah. I was like. I'm, I'm, I wonder if in my life I ever ran into Schwartz, because I worked. We're close in age, as much as I don't want to say it. Um and I worked in Woodbury, Minnesota, where he lived, but I think he had left by then. But no, did he go to Woodbury High School? Anyways, I'm just curious if 
I ever ran into just, are you doing fan. Acting audition to reality stuff? Um, no, like I like I just was starting to audition for like uh, theatrical stuff when Vanderpump Rules started, and I had one foot in, one foot out. My friend was in acting class with him. So I thought I was an artist. Uh, Meanwhile, my only credentials were a Coles commercial. H how did you? Uh... <laughs> Don't hate on Coles. Don't let Nana hear you hating on Coles. That Coles cash is legit. <laughs> how did you? Obviously, you know, one of the reasons people are afraid to talk about things like that is when their family wants you to do something else. My well, my my dad was he was always an enthusiast for whatever I wanted to do, but his dream for me was to be a doctor. I was gonna say cardiothoracic surgery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's always like because he was a hustler. I mean, he always had like three jobs, yeah. and um, he was an entrepreneur. But he just was like, man, I wonder. So now we're doing the Schwartz therapy. Life. I wish I would. <sighs> I'd love to see you be a doctor and thrive as a whatever a specialist. But just your mm -hmm. hourly like reminder a... that Sandoval was cussing out Katie's mom on national television. Just uh, another reminder if you needed to. More proof that this guy sucks balls. There you go. Yelling at someone's mom. Can you when imagine he... how he would feel if someone cussed out his mom? Was training and if him. Katie would have done that, she wouldn't even be able to come back on the show. Growing up, I mean, you know, you would come through at a very different time than his. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things I've noticed mm -hmm. is that, you know, from my generation, advising people your age and younger, it's, it's such a different world. It's so different. It's hard to yeah. almost understand what you guys are looking at. Yeah. And, and this whole mob thing that's, that's that is loose. It, it's, it's, it's really bad. Mobs are not good. Would you it's stop? Crazy. The only thing they do is the mob dancing. The mob, mob, what is it called when they all get together and they're like, rah, 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 rah. This whole mob, stop, stop. You guys are the mob. You're the mob that's trying to convince us of what we see right in front of us doesn't exist. Stop it, Pina says. You're embarrassing yourselves. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm i glad that I had, you know, I'm in a cover band. I'm in a nine-person cover band. Yeah, please stop. Don't tell us about that. We know. We know. Yeah, I love it. What do you cover? It's a karaoke band, Dr. Drew. It's awful. Everyone else is musically talented, except for Tom, the lead singer, who arguably should be just as talented. He's not. Nine players. Um, just everything from Chicago to Earth, Wind, and Fire. We don't do that. We could do. We could do that. We have a brass section. Wow. Um, I also play trumpet. Nice. But, um, mm, do you play trumpet or does trumpet play you? Because James Kennedy even says your trumpet sucks. We heard your trumpet. Yeah, we have That's female fun. singer. We have keyboardists. We do. You have a female singer. Well, that explains that he's a feminist. He loves women. He's got a female singer, not a woman. She's a female. Nineties, two thousands, seventies, whatever. Like. He's like, we ruin any genre of music, 80s, 90s, today, just we will ruin it. I will destroy it with my screaming. The weekend, we do. Not the weekend. Ocean, Billy Ocean. Not Billy Ocean. All, all what? I, that really bugs me that he goes after Billy Ocean. He was a wolf mother, and then like working for the week. Like we're all over the place. What's a and, wolf mother? Uh, we had concerts booked, you know, when this hall broke. Mm, did you? Or did you give away free tickets? Please stop. I was able to like go out. And people were just like, you didn't know, you know, it was a way of disarming the mob. Mm -hmm. No, you didn't disarm anybody. Nope, you made money off it. You profited off of the blood of others like that you left in your wake. And, and interacting with me as a human being versus as a Oh, please stop. Please stop. The rewriting of history is ridiculous. Vile well, that, that, that is the... Vile? The only one vile here is you, sir. Whenever people study these kinds of things, when somebody gets dehumanized, whether it's because of race or because of something they did, or whatever, you know, for some political leader dehumanizes a group, whatever it might be, contact is always the way to mitigate that. Mm. Yes. Oh, contact. Touch them. Touch them. Touch them without their consent or film them without their consent. When they send you, do masturbation FaceTime. Save it on your phone and film it. Screen record it without their consent. Yes, yes, Dr. The humanity comes rushing back in. Yeah, yeah. I learned that. Mm, no, if I saw him in person, my humanity would not come rushing back in. I would do exactly what Ryan Bailey mentioned yesterday in our collab. I would uh, avoid him like the plague. And then if he did ever have a question for me, I would have to be all too honest. Yeah. We learned that. I feel like we had such great practice for that. He didn't as much, but yes, he did. I got roasted pretty good. Oh, you know because saying? of being involved. Tom, stop it. Schwartz, stop it. Please stop it. You, no one, you deserve such a bad roast and you didn't get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is, as far as how to deal with No, people you. questioned you and they said, Did you know? How long have you known this is going on? How could you do that if you consider Ariana one of your close friends? You both lied. You were just getting called out. Like, oh my God, I don't even know. Well, because even like other people on the networks, like Housewives and, you know, other, they're, they're not. We were in an environment where people could watch an episode of Vanderpump Rules and then go in to Sir and get a cocktail from me or Jax and be waited on by Stasi and or Katie or whoever. And you know, seasons one through, I mean, I've stayed one of the longest um, through four or five. I'm there talking to people, and you just get used to. You're not only dealing with people, you're dealing with people in, in an environment where they're drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. 
And um, so unbearable, know, nomadic. I'm sorry you did so that. I learned that people <laughs> argue. They're an argument. If you get in, you start pushing one person away. Push right, back. variant. You push back instinctually without even thinking about it. Yep. If you guys are talking, I just literally put my hand yep. on the chest. You would start leaning forward. Yep. Yep. You could be talking about a football game. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would, I, you know, in this yeah, situation, I wouldn't surprise me if you did. Like whatever. And I'm like, no, I don't. And I'll go immediately and put my arm around somebody and then mm. just immediately calm down. Mm. And, you know, dealing with people on the road, you know, after shows, I would go take pictures with everyone, talk to everyone. Mm -hmm. Super quite, super nice. Connect with them. Well, this yeah. is the That's what you're supposed to do. As a touring comedian, yeah. After the shows, you go outside. People have come to my shows. We talk, we meet. Because I'm genuinely thankful that you spent your time and your money that is very valuable to you to come see me. So the least I can do is go out and say hi because I'm genuinely excited that I can go perform somewhere and people will come see me and enjoy what I do. Well, he's acting like he's giving the audience a gift. It's not a gift. If in fact they paid for these tickets, which I don't know if I believe that, you should be out there thanking them. You should always thank your audience. You should always be appreciative to the people who support you and are here. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to do what you do. Why wouldn't you want that? The fact that he's like, no, I still went out there and I did this and I, I shook people's hands and said, thank you. You should say thank you because you're able to tour as a singer when you can't sing. They are giving you a great gift, sir. They're allowing you to be a singer who can't sing. That's wow. That's crazy. You should give them all of the things. So this it was is great. It just, it was this is the other solution for dealing with social media mobs, which is if you are a good person and you do have something worthwhile to offer and say, keep moving forward and keep saying it. Because eventually, yeah, over it. whatever this crisis was sort of fades away and they're on to the next one. Yeah. Because again, the bloodlust is always there. They just get to the next one, the next one, the next one. And you have to be careful of not re-triggering something or- Stop the with the bloodlust. Dr. Drew, you are coming off like hella soft. Very, very like the bloodlust, sir. Please. If I did not like you. That's like me going, everyone who doesn't like my channel, everyone who leaves me a comment is like, I hate this bitch. She talks too fast. This, that, the other thing. It's the bloodlust. The mobs coming for me. No, there are going to be people who do not like what I do. There's going to be people who go, Jolene is not funny. I do not like Jolene. Jolene is not entertaining. They have every right to think that. That does not mean because they leave that comment that it's a bloodlust. <laughs> it just means they don't like me and they want to voice it. Do, am I just like, yay, that people are voicing that they don't enjoy me? No, nobody is. No creator, no creative. Nobody's going to do that. Nobody wants a bad Yelp review. What's going to happen? It doesn't mean that they're wrong. It just means I'm not for them. All of this shit is subjective. How we feel about you. <sighs> However, universally, you've acted like an asshole. And I don't think that's very subjective. I think that's pretty objective that we can see that. Speaking, not because you did something wrong. You said the wrong thing. You gotta be really careful. Oh yeah, and they're very glad. That, you know, blood a blood loss. No, it's still pretty bad. Anything I say is, is taken well, they, remember the, possible. They, I know, and remember, no, they want to feel justified in their- So words. bad at speaking. No one, uh, you think I want to be justified, Dr. Drew? I wish this motherfucker would prove me wrong. I wish every day I wake up, I don't, but every time I turn on this podcast, I'm like, I hope this is the time Tom proves me wrong. I hope this is the time we see a softer side of Sears. We see Tom did some work on himself. But he can't because he's too busy just spewing out nonsense and worrying more about his nails than he's worried about the insides of him, than his character, than the content of his character. So, no, I don't hope. I don't want to justify. I, I wish this wasn't true. I wish he wasn't so shitty. I mean, it is kind of fun to roast. But at points, it's not. It's not. It's infuriating. Blessed. And so they're looking for it all the time. So, ah, he is a horrible. I told you he was a horrible person. Yes, Barb. Yeah. Do people have self awareness to like be embarrassed by that behavior, though. Like I, they do. That's um, why they, they don't let that in. Don't you have the self awareness to be embarrassed? What the fuck do we have to be embarrassed about? You, sir, continually put yourself out on platforms to embarrass the shit out of yourself and say nonsense. But you're asking other people to have self awareness when you lack that so badly. This is exactly what's wrong with you. Deflect, 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 deflect. Never reflect, deflect. Who are you to say anything about anyone at this point, <laughs> sir? Yeah, that's why they look for you to give them something else to confirm that they did the right thing, trying to destroy you. Left to their own. Who's trying to destroy him by saying he sucks and his behavior sucks and he continues to suck? How's that going to destroy anything? It's like people are showing up to his house or threatening him or something. Like, this is ridiculous. This is Terrible. so Think of some of the things ridiculous. we have seen, particularly lately, with the world situation. Oh, where somebody does something and gets in trouble, and you really didn't agree with what they were doing. You, you might not get online to talk about it. You might secretly feel kind of like, 
Yeah. They might feel good. And that's a normal human thing. Don't don't lean into it and don't like it. You, you shouldn't like that you're no, that I, way. I, you I don't when I felt that way. Yeah. Even bullies, you know. Right. Like, you have bullied the women around you. You have bullied Ariana. You continue to make very rude comments about Katie and Ariana. We've watched you get in the faces of women season after season. Women, Stasi, Katie, Lala. You have almost bucked up to a woman like you want to fight them. I am sorry. That is far worse than anyone having an opinion about your horseshit behavior. You have long been the man that said, oh, th is this you, Tom? Is this you, Dr. Drew? I wish you'd do a little research because you look so dumb right now. I hate to quote Rihanna on you, but you look so dumb right now. Okay. Do a little bit of research before you go on to this stuff. Because this is ridiculous. And you're not helping the situation. If anything, you're only making it worse. Because this is Tom mad that he's a cyst in his mind. Um, not cis, a cyst male. And if he wasn't, and if he was gay, he could yell at women. Mad he can't yell at women. This is Tom. The new thing is that, you know, as a cis male. Um, Did you say cis? Raise your voice, yell, do whatever you feel entitled to do. But as a cis, as a straight male, if I was a woman, I could do that. If I was a gay male, I could do that. But as a straight male, if I raise my voice, it's wrong. So if he raises his voice and yells at a woman, it's wrong. But if he was gay, if he wasn't so cis, he didn't have so many cis, he could easily do that. That's who we're talking about. I'm sorry. This isn't an innocent uh, a man here who's just being dragged for no reason. Right. You see the bullies get there. You think no one's bullying him. No one is bullying him. He has bullied the women in his life. The women on his show, he's bullied. Ask all those women. Ask Stasi. Ask Katie. Ask Kristen. Ask Ariana. I'm sure so many. Ask Lala at one point. Bully, bully, bully. Yell, scream, want to fight. He's a bully. Mm -hmm. You know, good. good. Yeah, but you don't really, really, it's, it's always, they have their, they're also. Just because he wears a cardigan doesn't mean he is soft. Okay. Doesn't mean he's all sweet and soft and a feminist. Break it somewhere. Yeah. And I tried to, but I, maybe I'm guilty of having those thoughts, just like we're guilty of our, you know. You're guilty of doing those things. You're guilty of yelling at women on your cast. You're guilty of slut shaming women. You're guilty of being horrendous, sir fantasizing about things or whatever, but like to act on them is one thing I like. I mean, You've acted on all of those things. You go online and go at somebody. That's, yeah, to like, me, that's the most bizarre. Or, or, or even, it's narcissistic. Or just see people on, it's, on, on talk shows, you know, yeah. like these four women on The View every day, just like just literally <sighs> thinking about me uh, in such a negative way. Uh, about that's their job, commentating. It exists. People can have negative feelings about you. When did we decide in a society that everyone has to love you? It's, it's so different. It's not like anyone is stalking you or threatening you or ruining anything for you. That's how you remain relevant, sir. You have bad behavior. No one's like, you're fat, you're ugly, you're this. No one's picking on you for things that you can't control. Or it's all things that people are commentating on that you can control. It's your behavior. It's your actions. Oh, my God. I know all my chat is filled with very funny women. It's, I mean, we're pretty great. We're pretty great, the Royal Brief. We're pretty great. Yeah, he is a great example of what a man is not. Um, I don't even think Tom is gay because I feel like I would enjoy him. <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's just an asshole. Um, season 11 will be Tom's comeback. Watch. Oh, they'll make it like that. Nomadic. Um, he will try to prove how good he is. Therapy and not drinking and working on himself. All for show. This dude will never change. No, because this is happening in real time. So the season's already filmed. This is happening in real time. So we see this Tom. This Tom hasn't changed. So we'll be covering the show over here and we will keep, if he's going to lie, we will keep the truth over here. That's for sure. That's for sure. Um, Jennifer Lawrence did say he had bad skin. She did say that. Okay. You know, he's going to take that up with Jennifer Lawrence. I have to take that up. Oh, yes. And snapped on Lisa too. Let's never forget. This man has yelled at Lisa Vanderpump. Someone is old or older than his mom and his boss. A woman. Has he yelled at Ken? I didn't see him. I didn't see that. Every little thing I did for over a month. Not every little thing you did, Tom. No. You should go in there. Yeah. Oh, well. That'd be awesome. Okay. I'll that'd be that. really, really interesting. What's he doing? What's, what do they want him to do? Every day, just like, just literally, they talked about me uh, in such a negative way uh, about every little thing I did for. The view? Are you really mad at the ladies of The View who it's their job? Oh my God, fragile, male fragility at its finest over here. 
Do you know, do you ever think about the women you leave in your wake or Miami girl and her reputation, how that just, how she walked away from that show and the slut shaming she probably endured while you're, you know, going, she's a liar. She's a lying bitch. She's a lying slut. Do you ever think about that? Do you ever think about now the hate that Ariana will face? Because inevitably that's unfortunately what happens in society is we feel bad for Ariana. And then there becomes a point where even the women, the internalized misogyny hits and they're like, fuck that bitch. She's not the only one that's ever been cheated on. What's the big deal? She thinks she's too good just because she's carrying herself well. It's like, screw her. And they turn her, do you ever think of that and how you cause it? Do you ever think of Rachel Raquel? And this woman you define as coming into her own and blossoming at this moment where she was very vulnerable even according to you and you went in there and you wreck it Ralph. Do you ever think about that? You don't, you just think about you and what the fucking women on the view have to say about you, sir. They found your behavior atrocious because it is, they didn't waste their time for a month. Nonstop talking about Tom Sandoval. Again, this is blown way out of proportion in his head. He feels as though it's been all about him. Whoopi Goldberg just won't shut up about Tom. She don't even know your name. She doesn't know your name. She doesn't know your name. For over a month. You should go in there. Yeah. I will. They don't want you on the view. They don't want you to come on the view. I don't think they want you there. That'd be awesome. Okay. I'll take I think be really he has to be invited. Really, really interesting. Because I, I know most of them. And they're not like they are on TV. I'm surprised at that, in fact, some of the stuff they get I know, into. Like this girl's like, oh my, just why are why are we again blaming more women, the women of the view? It is their job. They are pop culture commentators. The same with e news, the same with any podcaster that comes, anyone that recaps a television show, you're bringing your opinion to it. And you, sir, are getting paid to put your life and your actions out there. And so people, fans, again, like they do with sports teams, are gonna have opinions about this. That doesn't make them wrong. That doesn't make them bullying you. That doesn't make them targeting you. They're not saying, we hate Tom Sandoval for no reason, his face, stupid. They're saying the things you did, the way you're acting. Well, I, I just, again, how many women, I if someone happened to keep count or if you're watching this later, I would love someone to put in the comment section, just if you could add up how many times Tom and Dr. Drew co-signed and blamed a woman for this man's behavior. Now the women of the view, now Joy Behar has to pay for the rest of her life because you're an unfaithful asshole who's not self-aware. This, this girl just like goes in on me, talks about like pretty much what a piece of shit I am, garbage human being. Yeah, you acted really piece of shitty. And like, wow, you should be a therapist. I'm thinking to myself, like, or a psychologist. Not, not like that, not like, you're like, like that. You're able to be objective. In a you don't think therapists have opinions about things? Obviously not while practicing, unless you're Dr. Drew over here, but she could definitely, she can have a whole life outside of therapy where she in fact does have a very subjective opinion on things. How is it that we have to school these people? A situation. But they they have jobs, <laughs> but they too like have. like showing. Well, not just objective. You don't judge and you don't, yeah. you don't attack and all that. Like, but... Yeah. Yeah. How could anyone judge me? I'm mind blown that a woman commentator on a television show based off commentating on pop culture has an opinion about something trending in pop culture. You wouldn't have a show. You wouldn't have a job. You wouldn't exist unless people watched, unless people had an opinion about this shit. It's not like you're just some random, you know, guy that works at Subway. And people are like, you know what? Fuck that Tom guy at Subway. What do you do? I don't know. I just fucking hate him. Fuck him. No, you're not just Tom Subway. Subway Tom. Okay? You're Tom on TV. Tom on TV. Reality TV, no less. This is why you all, and also Tom, you freaking hypocrite, you spent most of your time on that show being the judge, jury, and executioner. You were the narrator. You were just dragging everyone. Jax is a piece of shit. Kristen's a piece of shit. All these people are pieces of shit, and you're so above it, and now you get called out, and all of a sudden it's bullying. But didn't you get paid a pretty penny to sit on those couches, on those chairs with a cocktail next to you, telling the world how bad Stassi was and how bad your... um you know, fellow Vanderpump Rules cast was and judging them, Tom? Isn't that what you got paid for? Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's what you got paid for, Tom. Tom, that's dirty money. It's dirty money, Tom. In your words, it's very dirty, Tom. Seek help. But they um, mm -hmm. they have jobs to do. Mm -hmm. They're each playing a role at that table and they each mm -hmm. have to do certain jobs and mm -hmm. Maybe, but, boring. But it's like yeah. the enjoyment I see. 
yeah, it's not good. You, you were sport for a while. I, listen. Yeah, I would Tom, when you Steve were Ronaldo. on Vanderpump Rules and you were judging everyone and throwing everyone under the bus and giving your opinion on everybody and uh, criticizing and judging them, you enjoyed it. We could tell you enjoyed it. You enjoy, You loved when Jack's fucked up. You loved it, Tom. You loved slut shaming Lala. You loved judging Katie. You loved it, Tom. Mm-hmm. We could tell. It's sick. You should get help. There you go. You guys really hurt me. You, it made, I, did, I was scared for my life. You fueled it. That's what the women should say on the show. <laughs> you don't know me? There's a lot to the story that I'm sure you don't know. Even Jerry when he came on, he's like, you know, Tom, the reason why I think people are just coming is because we thought you were more righteous than that. What does that mean? Like you thought you always seem Beak, that's why you should watch the fucking show, Dr. Drew, because if you would know anything, a research this topic like a doctor uh, should, you would see that this man is the most self-righteous POS you've ever met because he was like, not me, ladies. I'm the anti-Jax, okay? I make decisions unlike Schwartz. I'm a nice guy. Look at my girlfriend. She's so smart. Ariana. The only, per the only thing that made you likable was Ariana. Let's be real. Let's be real, 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 real. Because when you were dating Kristen, it wasn't all that likable. Um, I mean, Kristen made you more relevant for sure. But then with Ariana, cause Ariana was like the one voice on that show that I felt really had like a feminist perspective. You know, Ariana just thought differently than a lot of the other women. And I always really liked that about her. Um, and then I feel like she elevated the show in that level. Uh, and, and so that's what I appreciated about Ariana. I always say she was the the feminist killjoy we needed on that show. Um, and I told her that to her face when she was at uh, a show I did um, at, at the Bourbon Room a year ago. Um, but it's true. She, we needed that kind of perspective because we didn't get it um, on reality shows whatsoever. And she would check these dudes in a lot of way. And, and I loved it. Um, so this fucking tom Ugh, i can't i can't thank you amberlina i appreciate it i appreciate it seem like more of a more stand-up human being than you were trying to be that's why you got caught in it yes you were pretending to be someone you were not and you got caught and you were the righteous person you yourself were like i am so good they are so bad this thing you couldn't get out yeah hmm. and uh i think a lot of the people on my show mm. would you, would you, you too yeah and he was cool when you brought him in here? Yeah, he wanted to, he apologized. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a really good guy. You know, I'm just thinking about you stuff know what? You need to do going forward. Um, guys are good guys. He's a good guy. I haven't heard them praise one woman in this whole podcast. He's a good guy. Real good guy. Real good guy. What about Nikki Glazer? You just had her on. She was pretty nice to you. She could have been way more rude to you. She could have roasted you up and made hurt your feelings if she wanted to. She didn't. Is she a good girl? Um, is she a good guy? A lot of it is about getting boundaries around who you are. Is he going to poop? Are and what your competencies are and your efficacies and your, who you are in relationships. Oh my yeah, God. You got to give it a good time. It's not sexy, but it's objective and healthy and productive. And, and, and then keep your head down and keep going forward and doing good things. And if you need to make amends, you know what amends is versus an apology? No, he doesn't amends know. He doesn't know what amends, amends is. is. He's never been through amends. any kind of program. He doesn't know anything about anything. Oh my Whatever God. you need to do. Some people need to go to prison to clean that mess up. Some people need to, I don't know, you know, give a yes. thing to somebody. You guys, they gotta make women, it. we hold you captive with, you know, inside our vaginas, there's claws and we just like claw you down and we just, we ruin everything. You know, oh, it's the classic sitcom wife. Oh, this, you know, big guy who's like, I don't want to do nothing. Homer Simpson type gets a hottie like Marge, you know, but she's such a nag. She never lets us have any fun, King of Queens. Oh, but it's hot Leah Remini. You know, uh, tale as old as time. That's what we do. We just keep you. We we capture you. We are your captors. Okay. <sighs> like you could have left this relationship, Tom. You chose to stay because you got off on it and you loved it. And you loved the cheating and the lying and you didn't want it to come out. And when it did, you're mad at the world instead of yourself for doing it. You're not a stand up man. You're a sit down, lay down baby man. And everybody knows it. And it's okay to say it. You're not being bullied. You are the bully. Tom Sandy Butt. Make, make it right. Make everything right. That Clean it is up. why I, people are like, and, and <sighs> roasting me and grading me and saying that, like, your apology it's wasn't good. Because that was like, always the problems with it. I'm like, I don't want to apologize. I'd rather just, like, like do it with action. Yes, words are cheap. What action have you done besides um, monetizing off your bad behavior? What were... Where's your actions? Where's your actions? Because even at BravoCon, you were acting like a dick. It's, it's always important, just the way people work, it's important to go, I fucked up, I'm sorry, here's what I did wrong, and here's what I'm gonna do to get make it right. He's never watched, he's never watched, <laughs> he's never watched, yeah. he's never watched. That's what I wanna do is, is 
to, to set to, to get back to why I feel like or what fulfills me in my life. Nobody Not cares. Me taking a situation and leaving it better than when I came to it. What situation have you ever taken? <laughs> Tilly, we can't with this guy. What situation have you ever made better? Oh my God, this is ridiculous. Everywhere you go, you leave a trail of lady tears. And Judy, thank you, Judy says, Jillian, I stopped washing dishes to write. Thank you for your review on this because you make too much sense and you help my head stop exploding with your sound reasoning. Thank you, Judy. I appreciate you guys. Oh my gosh. He just, again, he's the hero. I need a hero. And it's Tom. Tom's the hero, he says. Tilly, can you believe this shit? He's like, I just, I want to leave it better than where I left it. Then go pick up some goddamn litter on the beach. California's a mess. Get out there and help people. You know, do something that actually matters. You sitting here on your little podcast, playing a victim party, going on a victim tour, ain't helping nobody. You ain't leaving nothing better. Because YouTube was a hell of a lot better before you showed up with this fucking non-self-aware podcast. To it. Continuing to help people out. Like, because I get fulfillment out of that. You know, like, of course you do. Everything's about you and stroking your ego. Because when people say that I'm a great guy, I get fulfillment out of that. Being a positive influence on somebody. Else. You're not positive. There's nothing positive. The only positive thing about you is that no matter where you are, you will positively be holding a diet squirt. Or day. The drink of serial killers, allegedly. Saying hi to somebody, cheering somebody up. No, no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I also have a feeling that you need to become someone a little different than who you are. I don't know what Focus on you, Tom. You. If I was Dr. Drew, I'd say, no, no, no. Quit worrying about fixing anyone. You can't fix. Go to Ayanla. Where's Ayanla? Can we get fix your life with Ayanla? She can, she should do way, way better. You can't fix no one if you can't fix yourself. How are you going to fix anybody else? You're just projecting your bullshit onto someone else. Instead of dealing with you, the problem. Hi, it's me. You're the problem. It's you, right? Tilly, Tom Sandoval is the problem. Instead of focusing on that, you're projecting it onto other people. They don't need you to ruin their life. And, and put your bullshit on them. Fix you. Someone call Ayanla. We need her. We need her now. I don't know what I'm saying when I say that, but I, when I talk about the immaturity part, I feel like there's some, some personal growth that needs to go on here. And you think, Dr. Drew, after an hour and 14 minutes, we're finally talking about personal growth needing to happen. And you have to let it happen, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. What, you, never, you never tell what people need to grow into, but you need to grow into something. He needs to grow into something fast because he is collecting retirement very shortly. Very shortly. He's getting the AARP magazines. He better hurry up. Um, five kids, do you think? Maybe that's it. I don't yeah, know. Please do not procreate. Please do not do that to these children. Fix yourself. You know, like Sheree said, fix your face. You got to fix yourself. You fixed your face enough. Your face is fine. You need to fix yourself. I, I, it maybe, you know, dad, it's, it's going to be something. Uh, and, and if once you are that something, so much of this is going to be much easier to tolerate and understand and integrate into your life story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough, man. It is tough. It doesn't make it. It's not very tough. It's actually not very tough to admit that I suck and I need some personal work. I need to do the work. You got to do the work. And the work isn't in a bottle. It's not at the gym. It's not in a vape in lieu of a cigarette. It's not on a podcast with your friend who sits with a laptop over his boner, even though he never uses the gosh darn laptop. You got to do the personal work. You got to go in the woods, hire someone, and you got to be open to change and to pro progress and to be better. Tom, it's really not that hard. Make it any less tough. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Tough. It's gotten, and, uh, it's, it's gotten easier and you know. It hasn't gotten easier for us. Moving forward and, and you know, I, I had some dark times. I'm, I feel like I'm- Yeah, one time up. Jason couldn't wake him up from a stupor in his hotel room. Yeah, I remember that dark time that laptop boy told us about. I'm out of that. So, um, you know, I just want to, continue moving ahead and just doing stuff. I feel like you do things, you just keep doing No, it. you should stop doing all the stuff and just focus on the stuff in here and the stuff in here. You got to retrain yourself, Tom. I think things, it, it, it like, it, it moves time forward. It gets you to that, that next place. Have you aired any of these yet, the podcast? Yeah. Yeah. How are people receiving? Oh my God, Dr. Drew. Have you aired any of it? He knows nothing. Um, pretty good. Here's ah! just... <laughs> Tom, stop lying to Dr. Drew. People are not receiving this very well. Thinking that this isn't really important. It's a lot about you in this. And I'd like to see you pay attention to other people. Oh, you, yeah. I, oh, I plan on doing it. I know this is episode five. In episode six, me and Tom are taking questions from the audience. But eventually, I'm going to focus on someone else. He can't, Dr. Drew. That's why your narcissism test failed. It failed, sir. He can't. Oh, I promise eventually, one day, maybe, kind of. I'll try, 
probably not. Yeah. I, I, and yeah. that's again, yeah. like. We won't know. let them. It's the women. The women won't let them, I bet. I didn't even know today. Like, I didn't even plan for this to be like this. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't know what we were going to do either, but here we are. I was going to talk well, you know, about your, you know. Isn't it funny how it always goes back to you? And different things. and But yes, I don't want, this is not what I want it to be. I want to talk about people yeah. that I have. Mm, five episodes of what it's been. I would say, yeah, follow the patterns, Tom. Talk about my shit all the time. Don't worry about it. Other people, people have heard my shit. They might have been like this. <laughs> <laughs> Corolla makes me talk about it all the time. So I, I'm bored talking about my shit. Yeah. You've been through something extraordinary. We're bored talking about Tom shit, but here we are. I get a little self conscious, yeah, yeah. you know, talking about, you know, myself because I, I know, like, I have a tendency and well, my friends here, know that they can tell me. No, but listen, you're in pain right now. When you're in pain, it's hard not to talk about what you're in pain about. And yeah. and once you get kind of through it, then you'll you know, spread out and do that stuff. Yeah. I mean, they, if anyone understands what I'm saying, if I took a hammer and hit my finger, it'd be very hard for me to talk about Tom. I would just be thinking about my finger and my pain all the time. That's the way pain works. If it's psychic pain, physical pain, whatever it is, very hard to focus on other people's stuff when you are in pain. That's true. And then I guess too, also because of what it was in the public, like people want to ask me questions and talk about it too when I have guests on. Mm. Mm. Well, I was kind of intrigued because I didn't know anything. And, and the fact that it was something that was in the background all over the place, it just seemed, odd, seemed place. odd to me. It just seemed Me odd. too. I lost and, uh, and, it's, I'm, and nothing you of said. Of course, was it would good. seem odd to you who knew nothing about the show or the topic you were discussing. That's like me going in and talking about some kind of foreign relations I know nothing about, going into another country and being like, I don't get how you guys don't get along here. Like, I don't know. I don't know the history of it. I didn't study it. I don't know nothing about you, but it seems like you're making a big deal out of nothing, not knowing the culture, not knowing what's going on. That's how ignorant that shit sounds. Me just going in and be like, why can't you guys just like get along? What's like going on here? I just don't get it. This doesn't make sense to me. Granted, I've done zero research on it, nor will I, but you seem nice enough, Hitler. Yeah, it's totally fine. What's going on? Yeah, over here. Who do we got over here? Yeah, okay, fine. I don't see what's happening. It's a big deal. That's how ridiculous this sounds. The ridiculousness. Ridiculousness. Uh, thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Revealing to me and touching, frankly. But no touching? No, that's no surprise. No surprise. I really appreciate everything, man. Like I I'm, I'm very thankful that you I well, I wasn't thinking we were going to talk all about this stuff. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know for sure either. But but people interest me, and you interest me. And, I, and I, when we met at the the thing, I, I you caught my attention. I, I just because I just kept thinking, this is the guy they've been talking about. This is, didn't I'm going to make Mark. You know? Really? Yeah. And it's like it's like <laughs> oh. you to look more like a like somebody from like love. I'm going to have to. Is he? What is he just going to? Oh, I think he's going to say something problematic. Um, we need shirts. Don't date a Tom Tom. Oh, let's make that merch. Let's make that merch. I wonder if they could sue me. Maybe it'll just be don't date a Tom. You know, because like, is this about Tom? Luann's Tom? Tom and Tom? There's more problematic Toms on Bravo. Remind me in the chat. But let's see what he's going to say. Let's see what he's going to say. He's like, not like a person from, what is he going to say, Tilly? Attention. I, I just because I just kept thinking, this is the guy they've been talking about. This is, it didn't fit for me. You know? Really? Yeah. And it's like, it's like, <laughs> uh, me to look more like, a, like somebody from like Love Island or. Uh, maybe, or, or it just, it, it just, I don't know. Love Island. What do they have to do with it? Oh, I knew something wasn't right about the story. The fuck for uh, He only brought up Love Island because that's Ariana's favorite show. Love Island is what yeah. I was thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> is Dr. Drew high? He looks like he is about to fall asleep or he, it just hit him. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it was, yeah, maybe more than, but something. It's because, it, because I, I don't know. I, because I wasn't paying attention to it. I, I no didn't really, I wasn't aware shit. of it. But I thought, you know, I, I wasn't paying attention to the subject I've now been brought on to be an expert on. Um, but yeah, you Howie Mandel did, Dr. Drew. Very disappointing. Very disappointing, sir. It was, I could feel that you were in pain because of it and you were trying to make things better. And then I'm watching you in Special Forces and I'm you know, relating. The only to pain he has is that he can't be 28 anymore. That's the only pain. That's the only pain, sir. Experience is very strongly personally <sighs> having been through stuff like that. And I didn't like you beating yourself up so much. I didn't like oh my God. Everyone's so worried about him beating so, himself up. Especially now that I know the whole sort of landscape here. <laughs> And, and you know people Tom are going Girardi, to criticize you. me for being too soft on you yes. or too forgiving. Yeah, most definitely. You were too ignorant on him, okay? And you were so quick to dismiss people's very rational, logical criticism of this man. And you know nothing. You flew in from another planet. You're like, mm, I know I'm from Mars, but I don't understand this like uh earth thing going on here. What's happening? You guys are like broken up into sections. Can't y'all just like create one? thing. I don't really get it. I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I just don't get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and what I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be, I don't judge people. I don't yell at people. I, I don't, this whole idea of confronting is a, there's no such thing in, in, in interpersonal health. 
you know, like, don't you know how you hurt people? Yeah, he fucking knows how he knows him. Yeah. He's fucking living it for the last how many months? Yeah. Year. Are you sure? Are you sure he's living it or are the people that he hurt living it? Is he really living it, Dr. Drew? Are you sure? Are you sure, Dr. Drew? Of course people know. The confrontation that does not No, he's butt hurt. He's hurt that he's being held accountable and that he no longer has this hero edit that he had on Vanderpump Rules for all these seasons and that he got booed. He's hurt over that. That's what he's heard about. That doesn't here's and by the way, if you really do let's say I'm taking a heroin addict and I go, don't you know what you're doing to your family or you need to stop that drug? Boom. Defenses are up and you get nothing. Dr. Drew, you know what you're saying is just, ugh. yes, anybody knows that. As a recovering alcoholic myself, yes, I understand that and understand how interventions work. But what you did is you came in here and you coddled him like a man child. You did zero to negative zero research on any of this. You gave him excuses for his behavior and you allowed him to continue to blame other people, mainly women, which is his problem in the first place. That he has no accountability and just blames the women. So again, you want to make these big blanket statements because I'm a doctor, but you didn't do any research. So in this regard, I'm the expert on this shit. We're the expert on this shit. All right. And then you want to blame it on just the blanket cancel culture. It's, it's the mob. It's those mob dances. It's the mafia. It's John Gotti or it's Tony Soprano. It's mobs, people, their fault. It's these gosh darn crazy bitches. Nothing done at that point. You can't find anything out. You can't move that. What did you find out? What work did you get done? Other than Tom, you should go on The View and confront those bitches who said something to you. Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom, it's not your fault. It sounds like you, Dr. Drew, said the girlfriend. You blamed Ariana. We heard you. We were like, wow, it sounds like your last relationship that she got you to that. It's like, huh? What? Hmm? Who? Huh? move that person forward they just feel abused and that is not abused not how you, how you they like to use some big words that mean nothing when they use it because not relevant for the situation interact with people to learn about he and has abused emotionally didn't ariana in her us weekly interview didn't she explain it as tom being abusive in that way hmm maybe you could have read that Maybe you could just done a little, a little bit of research. I understand you're going to, you know, go wherever, you know, to be relevant or where they're paying you, Dr. Drew. But I honestly expected a little more from you. I really, really did. Really did. Empathize with their experiences. Well, thank you so much for sure. that. My pleasure. You can't sure. empathize with someone who isn't in reality of what the experience really was. So how can I empathize with a man who's recreating and constantly changing the narrative and rewriting history that we all saw and watched? If he's not in the same reality of, as me. He doesn't see what actually happened. What, what, huh? He doesn't empathize with any of his victims. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is crazy, you guys. This has been probably the craziest um, Tom Sandy Butt podcast. Everybody loves Tom episode that I've ever done. But thank you guys for sticking with me through this whole thing. I did not. Ex I just expected it to be like. Okay, Dr. Drew gives him a test. He's like, I guess you're not narcissistic. I didn't expect all of the coddling. I didn't expect all of this like men, like men pride bullshit over here. Um, it's the women's fault. And the fact that someone as educated as Dr. Drew comes on the show and totally misses, whether on purpose or just misses because he's off his game, the fact that this man blamed, I mean, damn near 15 women in this live for all of his behavior and took no accountability. None, none. Oh God, I feel like I have read the book um, on therapy. And so, I mean, I might have to go in and get a little degree, but again, you can't help someone if they don't want to help themselves. And Tom Sandy, but does not want to help himself because he has a bunch of people enabling him. And that's what happens. You know, you have people with a vested interest in him. You have people who are making a lot of money off him being a part of this show. And so they don't want him to get better. They don't care if he gets better. Dr. Jolie, maybe we'll uh, rename it. We'll rename it. Stop blaming the women's. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah, everyone's scared to get canceled, but there really is no cancel culture. There are consequences for actions, for sure. But if Tom Sandoval hasn't gotten canceled, 
no one's getting canceled. Everyone finds more work, new work, work over here. Stasi's doing uh, better than she ever has on her tour. This whole, this is just a way for people not to be accountable for their behavior. They say cancel culture, like there's just a mob waiting to cancel you. And that's not necessarily true. Are there people and there's certain, you know, things where, you know, even with comedy, you'll find people who are, they want to be quick to be like, just because they don't like a joke. They're like, in my, no, that joke cannot exist. And that's not true for art forms. Um, you know, those things can still exist, but don't expect everyone to have a positive reaction to it. You can't get rid of it. But again, you can't control who has a positive or negative um, reaction towards that. So uh, you guys are fantastic. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. He does speak like a preschooler. It's like, educate yourself, sir. You're very lucky. You are in the privileged state you're in and able to be on all these shows and have this money, even though you clearly don't know how to handle that. Um, when you are just not that smart, not that smart. Uh, 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 um, do I have a chainsaw to go with that shirt? Hell yeah. Lumberjack Jolene is in the building. Yes. I am a uh, Paulina Bunyan. That's for sure. That is for sure. So no one's trying to cancel anybody. We're just pointing out the fact that this guy is still lost in the sauce, whether it's the alcohol, the mushrooms, the cigarettes, the blaming, the lack of self-awareness, um, the, all of it. He's lost in it. So you guys, you guys, we're two hours and 50 minutes. That is insane. Oh, God. But I feel like we made some good progress here. We made some good progress. Uh, thank you, Ms. Diamond. Roast and recap. The rulings are, are final. Yes, this is Judge Jolene. The cases are real. The reality stars are real. The rulings are final. This is <laughs> Judge Jolene. I rule Tom Sandoval is an assholer whole lot of asshole. There's a whole lot of asshole in this motherfucker. Tom, 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 Tom. There's a whole lot of asshole in this motherfucker. Tom, 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 Tom. Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Thank you guys so much. Hit that like, hit that subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, share this with your friends. If you're in Vanderpump groups, Reddit, I love the Vanderpump Reddit. I mean, just share it out so we can find more individuals like us who just we need to need to get this off our chest need to get this off our chest social media anywhere you guys would be kind enough to share it would be amazing please comment after the video post i don't get to see all of your comments and i like to so um please leave a comment it also helps in the algorithm and uh shout out let's get back in here to my super chatters today and uh my new members joanne thank you for becoming a member chicken head thank you for the super chat chicken head again thank you so much mtronics thank you Rhonda. thank you jill thank you so much and robert you guys are amazing and wonderful and you make this full-time content creator comedian thing just so much damn fun i'll tell you guys i don't uh, i don't know if i could watch any of this crap um without you guys all right uh i'll be back tonight we have we're almost done with uh big brother so i'm gonna be back with that i'm also gonna be over on my sip and key channel so make sure you subscribe there if you're not already subscribed with the wonderful busy blue as we continue our revamp of that channel previously we had been calling out problematic youtubers but they're so boring. So now we're, 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 uh, what's the thing that Karen Huger says? We're reorg. No, we're revisiting. We're re. Okay. It's almost three hours. Jolene, just end it. All right. I'll see you guys very soon. Remember to enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Bye.